Blog Talk Radio. The Alan Alford Talk Talk Show. The Alan Alford Talk Talk Show. Your host is here for the show tonight to interview our special guest. everybody to another great episode of the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. So delighted to have you join us here today. It's going to be an awesome show. Definitely want to call in. It's going to be the number 516-418-5572. Again, that number is 516-418-5572. We're going to have an outstanding Friday night show for you. It's going to be fantastic. And before we get the show officially started off, we're going to go ahead and let you guys know you can go ahead and call us at that number here, the 516-418-5572. And also, you can feel free to go ahead and comment and chat as well. So you have plenty of options here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. We're going to go ahead and thank our wonderful sponsor, kick the show off, Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce. So delicious and addicting, you may need a support group. Feel free to visit Chef G's right here in beautiful Tampa, Florida, 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. Again, that's 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. And if you can't come down to Tampa, visit him at flbbqsauce.com. Again, it's flbbqsauce.com. Outstanding sauce, outstanding flavor. Guess what? My man was doing the things big. That's right. Great things happen when you support here at the Allen Offer Sports Talk Show. You want to see what Chef G looks like? He looks just like this. And let me just put this banner down so you can see the bottom of it. He was featured on Fox 13 Tampa Bay News this week. So shout out to big time Chef G's Florida Bark Sauce. So delicious and addicting. You may need a support group. Let me go ahead and give him a round of applause and do that for him. Florida barbecue sauce, so delicious and addicting. You may need a support group. He was on Fox 13. That is correct this week. So, yes. Let me go ahead and all music and all songs for the telecast here on both YouTube as well as the blog talk. All of the music is provided here by Sam Scola Songs. I want to thank Sam Scola Songs and his beautiful wife, Mary. Sam Scola Songs is on vacation, but you can feel free to email him, sing along with Sam at gmail.com. And all songs, you can listen to them again at Sam Scola Songs are available on YouTube Spotify.com, we're going to go ahead and play a Sam Scola song. 
the Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song for you right now. We're going to go ahead and kick things off. And let me go ahead and play that song for you right now. The Chef G's Florida Barbecue Sauce song here on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. We go ahead and fire that right up. Comes in for variety, Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, a natural flavor. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce, Florida gold honey mustard on burgers and ribs. Tasty fusion on pork and sausage, a classic. Chicken steak chips, a hot heat wave on meatballs and ham. It's a cookout treat. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Serve on fish and vegetables. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G. Florida barbecue sauce, Chef G's, Florida barbecue sauce. So delicious and addicting, you may need support group. Don't forget to visit Chef G's right there at 301 South 22nd Street, Tampa, Florida. And again, if you cannot come down to Tampa, that's all right. The website is flbbqsauce.com. Again, it's flbbqsauce.com. You cannot go wrong. And definitely, let's go ahead and bring on a great caller. Let's do that for you right now. How you doing, Lou? All right, Alan, thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Got a couple of hot games right now. Yes, that's indeed. In fact, let's go ahead and update our great fans. Yes. Yeah, well, we, of course, you got the, uh, we got the audio traffic right now trying to hold on. So, and uh, listen, they might. Uh, the Cleveland's up putting a fight, though, but I think we're going to win game seven. Oh, yeah. Let me go ahead and update our great fans on the game. Let's see here. Okay. Yeah, so it's 4-2 Knicks, and the next game is being played. Let me just take a look here. Yeah. Give me one second. When is game seven? Game seven will be Sunday. Sunday, okay. Yeah, because that's going to be, man, if the Knicks don't close the series out, you got to blame them. You got to blame them. You know, when you get your competition reeling, you got to close the door. You can't let them back in the door. Ask the Yankees that, the New York Yankees. You know, you have to close the door because – Things are very competitive. Guys get used to you more, and then before you know it, you're behind the eight ball. So, yes. what are your thoughts on that? You have to close the door. You can't let you, you can't let it get away with that. You know your your game was on your season's on the line. You have to do all you can to avoid you know having a game seven. Or if you're in Orlando's case. You know, you want to do everything you can to get to that game in seven. It tells you what you're playing, how you look at. You know, this is the time, you know, I mean, it's where to go home. So each team has to do whatever they can to keep to keep on, you know, going. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, you got to do what you got to do to keep on going. And I'm just hoping that the Knicks close out this series because they, to me, they had the, the chance to do it. And they let their guard down, and now it's it's one of those things where it's hard to close the door. So, 
I'm hoping they pull it out. What do you think? Do you think they win in game seven? You mean the Magic? I'm talking about the Knicks. 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 Um, well, you know, we faced the Pacers before, and, you know, it comes out, you know, it, it's split. So, um, I just, I do think we can beat the um, Deep Brains. I mean the Pacers. And um, I think it'll be about, I don't think we're going to go to a seven of the game. I really don't think we're going to, I think we'll do all we can to avoid that. I think we can win six games. It should be interesting to see. You know, I, I definitely do think we'll see what happens, but it should be cool. I, I, I think they'll pull it out. I think they'll pull it out. And for those of you who uh, took the Sixers as the favorites who are going to win that series, ha, I told you so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so. We'll see. We'll yeah. see. We'll see what happens. If the NBA is not healthy, you know, the, the Sixers are not going to win. And he wasn't going to go that healthy. Yeah, I know what you're saying. And I, I think, um, let me just make sure here. I, I do think the Magic is going to close it out. I do think the Magic is going to win the series. That's my prediction. Uh-huh. Well, I, I think they'll well, win. Uh, it's not over yet. It's only up by five with eight seconds to go. So it's not over just yet. No, you're right about that. It's not over. It's definitely not over yet. So we'll see. Let me just take a look here. And yeah, so we'll see. Okay. Let me just take a look here. And but the Rangers, what do you think about them? Fabulous. That was that series was. I mean, the only game we had to really worry about was Game Two. Um, you know, with with the uh, Capitals uh, fighting back. And, you know, coming down to the last second, see that goal is going to go in, but the Rangers' defense uh, held it up. Other than that, it was pretty much a cakewalk for the Rangers. So now mm-hmm, we're, gonna, we're going to face um, – I don't think it's going to be that, that tough of an opponent to be out of the Hurricanes, even though they beat the Devils last year. But I don't think it's the same Hurricanes team as it was, you know, a season ago. Rangers look strong on defense, and I think they can, you know, be able to uh, take on the uh, Hurricanes. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I think that should be that should be a great, great matchup. And I think I'm proud of the Rangers, man. They made it. They made it. They went ahead and did their thing. I'm proud of them. Yeah, I mean, you know, we all know, of course, that the um, okay, it's a win. We got a game seven on Sunday. Yes, we do. We all yeah. know about the President's Trophy. You know how very few teams. That win the trophy, go on to win the world, go on to win the Stanley Cup. But you know the Rangers, I think, has been special this year, and and I think with enough with the, like the defense, I said, as well as the offense, um, I think they have enough, you know, uh, to take it and you know pull it off. Yeah. So, you, so like you think you think minute. the Rangers are going to take it all? I do. I do, th- I do think the ring. I do think the going to take it all. You still with me? Yes, I do think the okay, going to yeah. take it all. You think the Rangers are going to take it all? You said? Yes. Wow, that's a bold prediction there. My man is saying they're going to take it all. <laughs> you know, Although it can happen. Some people, uh, there are some people that I do know who have different opinions about that. About that because. Um, yes. Um, one of my uh, cohorts on, on my show he is a Bruins fan, you know, and I'm going to hear from him tomorrow, of course, and on his show as well. Oh boy. And one of my dear friends is also a Bruins fan. Yeah. But that's going to be fun if it comes out. I'm looking at I'm the conference final. I really am. Oh, finally, Greg Cooper scored. Oh. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really looking, um, you know, for this. Right to happen, you know, between uh, our team and you know their team. So uh, I'm kind of looking forward to it be a conference final matchup. Of course, we got to wait. I got to wait about another uh, two weeks or so. But uh, 
if it comes true, oh, well, I'm gonna be right for it. You you're right about that, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> It should be awesome. I'm really thinking that, you know, now that the the lightning is out of it, I'm going to be rooting for the Rangers, you know, but. Smart man. Yeah, I am. You know, it's just that I think they have a chance. You know, anytime you do really well in yeah. the first series, you I always feel in most series, the first one is the most difficult. Once you kind of get past that one. Yeah. It, it becomes, it's not easier, but I think you could breathe a sigh of relief. You got a few games underneath your belt. You was able to have some it success. It takes so long to get the first round done. Yeah. You got some, you know, you kind of got the jitters out. You was able to have some yeah. success. And you could get the ball rolling. I think you could start playing more of who you are and your identity. Not that you can't lose going forward, but I think you start feeling more like, okay, I could do this. The confidence level rises. You better do it. Yeah, so it should be great to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Good. How about the Knicks? I think we can be the Pacers. I mean, you know, this is not the era where we had, you know, Reggie Miller and all that stuff. So uh yeah, <laughs> I, I think maybe we have a chance I think we have a chance to uh you know be be the Pacers. Of course, that was for revenge. We'll beat them in 1994. So that's what the 95 was all about with that. Because we beat them in 94. Exactly. Yep. But you're right. It should be great to see that, too. It should be really great to see. Yeah. How was your show last Saturday? Well, I could use a few more callers, but um, you know, at least we got at least we got you know um, uh, some done. Uh, I think though, for the next three months, it's going to be the busy, the busiest uh, sports season I think I've had in quite a while. Yeah, that's a great thing, you know. You know, it's it's. I have to tell you, since I mean, February, this summer, this summer is going to be huge. Yeah, I have to say since since uh, February, mid February, it really got busy for me on my end. It's been really hectic. A lot of well, events. Yeah, but, yeah. But I mean, on the sports calendar, you know itself, you know, because um, we got you know, well, between now and um, mid August, it's going to be uh, pretty intense with with uh, all the events going on. Exactly, a lot of things going on. It just it feels like every other week there's something going on. Absolutely. You're right. But it's exciting. And the, and the Canucks just advanced as well. Oh, wow. Okay. The Open Final. Yeah. Just went final. So the Canucks advance. Canucks advance. Rangers were the first team to... Uh, to get in the season, so everything is coming up uh, the way I, I think. Oh yeah, should be exciting. We're gonna we're gonna keep yeah. everybody posted. And speaking of that, what do you got cooking on your show tomorrow? Well, like I said, you know, it's the start of you know a very busy season in, in the sports world. For starters, tomorrow, uh, of course, we'll do the last pick, the last pitch of the uh, NFL draft. And uh, the Jets got Mr. got the Mr. Irrelevant pick. I'll explain that tomorrow. Um, also, I'll take your producer for the Kentucky Derby, which is tomorrow. For those of you who forgot, uh, yeah, we'll also continue with the uh, playoffs, the NHL, uh, NBA. Um, I think I'll start doing some baseball injury reports because there's been a lot of them um, to uh, start the season these past few weeks. So I think I'll take care of that as well, uh, USC and WWE um, wrestling, and I'll do a preview of um, the upcoming WNBA season, since that is now taking the uh, Andrews of Sports World by storm. So I might want to, you know, touch on that as well. So I'll have all that, and of course, our regular features, the, uh, the biggest star of the week, uh, the biggest star of the week, we'll also look at the monthly sports schedule. 
and, uh, and events. Um, and everything else. So same time tomorrow. Uh, 512-543-4662, 512-543-4662 from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern time. That's 4 to 6 Central or Mountain or West, 4 to 6 Eastern. Some of you seem to forget that. Yes, 4 to 6 Eastern Standard Time Zone, 512-543-4662. Again, that's 512-543-4662. Make sure you call in, talk to Lou. And don't forget the YouTube resource, The yes, Enhanced please. Sports Show. Right. Go to that, and you'll see the show of its entirety. And subscribe to. And he won't, he won't do you like Patrick Beverly if you don't subscribe. <laughs> well, <laughs> he, he maybe. No, no, no. I can't do that. <laughs> and there's a lot more yeah. I'm going to talk about that on this show, about that event and that incident. Yeah. And on the Allen Alfred Sports Talk show. Yeah. And But yeah, so definitely make sure you guys support Lou. Make sure you support Lou. The only reason why I didn't call in last Saturday is because I was on a plane. I shouldn't have been on a plane at that time. I'm going to talk more about that in the next segment and a lot more. But yes, you guys got to make sure. And I will call in tomorrow too between 4 and 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Zone. And check out the YouTube channel, too. It does work on planes, too, you know. It sure does. Yes. You guys got to call in. Yeah. Yep. We do work. We, we, it does work. Well, maybe it's up when the allergy gets a little bit high, but other than that, it does work on a plane. Wow. No excuses, then. <laughs> there you go. So you call in. That's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, Lou, I always right. appreciate you. You're the best. Thanks, Alex. You're welcome. All right. Talk Hope to you hear tomorrow. Show tomorrow. You All got right. it. Good night. Have a great night. Always a pleasure. Take care, sir. So. Bye now. It's an awesome, fantastic, wonderful Lou. Always great when he blesses us with his presence. So thank you, Lou. Appreciate him. And, and in fact, Go ahead and give Lou a round of applause, in fact, too. So that's going to be awesome if you do that. Right. A round of applause, folks. Yeah, so let me go ahead and give you guys some UFL news and Explain to you what happened, okay? If this, first and foremost, God is amazing. God is just fantastic. I went ahead and was the EMC for the Gigi's Playhouse, Gigi Fit, okay? Everything went as planned as far as the event. Spectacular. I really appreciate Gigi's Playhouse for giving me the opportunity and bless me with the second year in a row to be an EMC. The only thing about this event, though, pretty much as soon as it was over, I had to get out of there and go right to the airport, which I did. Get to the airport. Now, it was my mistake on this part. I did not check in. Lesson learned, and never will I make that mistake ever again. I did not pre-check in. As I was kind of like walking real fast to the gate, I checked in or attempted to check in. I won't mention this, the airline on the air, but... They would not let me check in. They said I had to go to the counter. When I got to the counter, the girls who basically did not want to be working there was there at the counter, and they were helping other people. One girl went to break and came back, and me and this other guy who was on my flight came back. She went to break and came back, and we still was on the line. And the people ahead of us, they had issues with their tickets, so it wasn't just them – putting their bags on, and that's it, I got jammed up. It was 20, 25 minutes, and right at that point, that just killed the deal. So I was hot. I ain't going to lie. I was hot. But that same guy that was there that missed a flight with me, he was a blessing because if it wasn't for him, I was just going to go to take it to the house and say, forget it, be real upset, and just pretty much steaming mad for the whole weekend. 
But after the kind of frustration kind of went away, not went away, but kind of calmed down, subsided hearing him, I booked another flight with another airline. It was going to get me at 8 o'clock in Dallas, which meant that I was going to miss pretty much the whole game. And luckily for me, because of talking to him and planning, I did take the flight. I did get on it. I was able to actually watch the flight, the the game on the airplane, which was really cool. Get there, land, get right from the airport, take an Uber right to the game, and get there with just under five minutes left in the game, which is pretty much the prime time you need to be there. I made it by the grace of God. Got a chance to take a picture right here with Daryl Johnson. This is the Arlington Renegades versus the Brahmas UFL game. Let me go ahead and pull up that picture here. That was awesome. So the boost. That was worth it right there. You can see me on the plane. That's the same shirt I was wearing to 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 be the EMC instead of having five, six hour gap, I didn't have any gap. So I basically didn't even have time to change my shirt. And I made it though. That's some of the game right there. The last five minutes. It was awesome though. I did make it. So that's the main thing. But man, what a eventful day. Stressful. I've never missed a plane ever in my life. And it happened. But at least now I know if you do miss your flight, you do have other options. You may not be able to take it from the same carrier, but you might be able to take it from another one and make things happen. The game itself, unfortunately, the Arlington Renegades lost another game. They went down 0-5. I would say I wasn't really surprised that they lost this game. I would be lying to you because the Brahmas have a very good run game, very solid. They have two very good bruiser type kind of fast backs and I know that the Arlington Renegades this season have been struggling with the run defense not only that the Arlington Renegades themselves have not been able to really muster up much of a run game I will give them credit they did try to make an effort to run the ball early in the game but I just felt like the Brahmas were going to run the ball pound it a lot Arlington was going to kind of was a big question mark with them running the ball. I felt like in order for them to really beat the Brahmas, they was going to have to run the ball a lot better. They tried, but ultimately it did not work. I don't feel like if you're just going to, with the pass rush the Brahmas have, and just throw the ball, I just feel as if you become one-dimensional against the Brahmas. It just makes it, with the way that team is set up, it just felt as if it was not going to be ideal for the Renegades to beat them with those type of dynamics. And it was that case. They, the Brahmas went ahead and won. The first part of the game, I almost felt as if the Brahmas could have ran away with the game the way they were running the ball, 50 yards a clip. They were having a tremendous amount of success running the ball. And it almost felt, even though they were only about 10 points behind, at one point, the Arlington Renegades, it felt like they were really getting blown out of the game, but they weren't on the scoreboard, per se. But ultimately, it was a loss. It brings their record to 0-5. I still do believe in the Renegades. I do think they could turn the ship around and keep going and make it. The only thing is, it doesn't get any easier. They have to face the Michigan Panthers, which I did research on them. They're not that easy of a team. And I feel as if, if the Michigan Panthers do have a successful run, they're able to run the ball against the Owens Renegades, which has been kind of a struggle, them stopping the run, I don't feel as if it's going to get any easier. Unfortunately, when you're the champ, these things do happen. People are always looking to beat up on you. And having said that, we got a call on the line. How you doing? Hey, can you hear me loud and clear? Yes, I sure can. How you doing? Okay. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for taking my call. I just, I just found you on Block Talk Radio. I'm sure a lot of people find you on YouTube, but I actually found you on the original home base of Block Talk Radio. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much yes. for joining okay. us. You're welcome. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, so just like I just found you. So do you go over pretty much all sports topics or just like whatever you bring up right now? I go over quite a few, not all sports topics, but if there's something you have in mind, you know, I, tonight was UFL, NBA, NHL, and boxing. But if you have some off topic, I'm more than ears. Okay, great. I got a great topic. Um, I mean, if you're not interested, I'll understand it. But if you give me a chance, I hope you can tell I won't be boring. I'll keep it interesting. I have come to the conclusion based on tons of research, and you're going to laugh when I say research, but trust me, it's tons of research, that out of all the sports fans in the history of mankind, the worst sports fans of all time are Michael Jordan fans. Then, What do you think about that? I I do I can understand that where people are coming from because they feel as if Michael Jordan is the goat. I don't think they consider anybody else like anybody in the neighborhood of being close to Michael Jordan because of his perfection in the finals. So I do think it's it's a bit skewed that way. Not taking it away from Michael Jordan, he's fantastic, and he is going to be tough to kind of surpass. But I do think you have to be more open minded. Okay. Now, I, I'm glad you said open-minded because I want to say a couple things about what you said. And I hope you could be open-minded. Um, yes. I, I like that you're open to why someone would question Michael Jordan fans. That we're on the same page. But when you say he, he was perfect in the finals or he's going to be tough to surpass, none of those things are true. That's actually the kind of thing that a Michael Jordan fan might think. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I respect Michael Jordan, and I definitely do think – if someone has a case that he's the GOAT, I think it's hard to kind of kind of counteract that if you're comparing him to LeBron. You understand? I do think Michael Jordan right now still does have the leg up on LeBron for a couple of reasons, but I do think LeBron has closed the gap quite a bit. And I do think, to LeBron's credit, he, he's up there. Okay, so a couple things. If I sound like I'm rushing, it's only because, you know, Whenever I find a show, I, you never know how long they're going to give a caller. So you kind of just rush as yeah. fast as possible to get as much <laughs> yeah. in there. Um, so before, if, if you ever decide to hang up on me, just give me a heads up so I, I can at least close it up. Um, a couple of things I, I got a question again. So when you say uh, – I don't have the exact words. Don't quote me. But when you basically say how he's got the leg up um, and it's tough to surpass him, those things are actually not true. And when you bring up LeBron James, this is actually one of the reasons why I question Michael Jordan's fans mm-hmm. because – Anytime you question anything about Michael Jordan or his fans, they automatically jump to LeBron James when he has nothing to do with the topic. So, for example, I didn't bring up LeBron James, but you did. Yeah, yeah. You're right because, I, you know, people, you're, they automatically bring up LeBron just because he's really the only one who I feel as if it's close in the neighborhood. I mean, as much as I love Kobe oh, and wow. I really miss Kobe, I, I don't know if Kobe's – in that category of all-time goats. I, I definitely think Kobe so, is fantastic, but I don't know if he's in mm-hmm. Michael's category yet. Okay. So based on the few things I know about you, and I, I acknowledge I don't know you that well, but based on the things you said about tough to surpass, leg up, uh, perfect in the finals, LeBron James is the only other guy, not Kobe, uh, and then you were you were mentioning about how he won and all that, is it fair to say – that I'm not wrong when I call you a Michael Jordan fan. I, I'm i not a Michael Jordan fan, believe it or not. I, I, I appreciate you saying that. I'm not. I, I definitely respect Michael Jordan's game. I admire what he did on the, on the court. The reason why I'm mm-hmm. not a big-time Michael Jordan fan, I'm not 100% sold in, is because I know how Michael Jordan is off the court. I know that okay. a lot. He, he, he does great things on the interviews. He can give fantastic interviews, and he always says the right thing on camera, but I think off camera, the same Michael is not the same. Okay, so let me show you. Um, So when I say Michael Jordan fan, I don't mean like you buy his tchotchkes or you put a poster (laughs) on the wall, like you buy his cologne to impress people and all that. That's not what I mean. When I say Michael Jordan fan, there's a mindset that only one group of people have. Think of it like if someone said to you, Donald Trump is the greatest, and if you disagree, you're a stupid Democrat, and you know the election was rigged and all that. You know those are certain things that only a Donald Trump fan or a Republican fan would say. Or if you want basketball, if a LeBron James fan said to you, he was perfect in the finals, only Michael Jordan can be close to him, LeBron James has the leg up, all the things that you said about Michael Jordan. If someone said those things about LeBron James, 
you could understand why they're a LeBron James fan. So what I'm saying to you is every point that you made, uh, not literally every point, but your main points about what you and I disagreed on, these are things that only a Michael Jordan fan would say. If you want some examples to, so I can prove it to you, I'll prove it to you. Sure, sure, please. Okay, so for example, when you say, basically you're saying that LeBron James is the only guy who can be close to him. That's actually not true. There are lots of players, and I mean lots, who are actually better than Michael Jordan. And whenever someone has this mindset of Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, certain names that always come up, it's usually people who grew up in the 1980s and 1990s and or who are influenced by the media. Because the media is always bringing up Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, and so on. No, no, that's definitely, you got a great point there. You know, it's hard when you are comparing somebody to somebody you haven't seen. So, yes, I I am from the 80s and 90s. And Michael Jordan, it's, it's not just that I think that he did great in the finals. It's just that the teams he had to beat were just phenomenal teams. It's, his competition level was so great. You know how it is now in the NBA. You can barely touch someone and you get a foul call. You flop, you get a there's foul a many, call. There's many problems, with, many problems there too. Uh, many problems there too. So uh, this one, this one's actually a lot to bring up, but I know there's a time limit. So I'll just bring up, because uh, you, you said about how uh, touching, uh, competition, uh, fouls, and all that. So uh, I'll try my best to go as fast as possible. Um, number one, the only people who question today's NBA, usually when they say they just stand around and shoot threes, they're soft, they're not physical and all that, it's usually Michael Jordan fans. I've never heard a Jerry West fan say something like this. The other thing that you said about the 1980s and 1990s, they were questioning that time at like mm-hmm. crazy back then. But Michael Jordan fans have changed history where they act like it was the golden era, the best era, the toughest era and all that. In other words, everything they say about today's NBA, except – what if they say they stand around and shoot threes, except that part. They were saying back then, and when you talk about Michael Jordan's competition, they used to crap on his competition all the time. They used to actually take away from him, which I'm against. They used to take away from Michael Jordan by saying everybody got retired, everyone got old, everyone got injured, et cetera. Uh, and when you say Michael Jordan beat other teams, he never beat a team by himself. It's a team game, but you Michael Jordan fans act like a guy wins and a guy loses. No, no, Michael Jordan definitely, he had help. I mean, he had Dennis Rodman on his team, Scottie Pippen, Ku Coach, and he even had uh, that great shooter, Paxton. He had, and he had, not even to mention, Phil Jackson. You know what I mean? He had, he had, he had guys on his team. There's no doubt about it. Right. And, right. He, I mean, he didn't do it by by himself. His era, his, his, just so you know, his era. I don't. I never question any era. I want you to know before I tell you what I'm about to tell you. I never question any era. But if you're, if Michael Jordan fans are going to do this routine where they tear down every era and every Hall of Famer that's a threat to Michael Jordan, because they do, they tear down every era oh, yeah. except the 1980s and 1990s. And when they sometimes they'll even tear down those two decades if it, if something's a threat to Michael Jordan. But anyway, if some if they're going to tear down era, you could actually make a legit case. I, I can prove this to you. That the 1980s and 1990s was the worst NBA era of all time, and that the 1990s in particular was the worst NBA era of all time. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, um, I have a question I, to you. Who do you feel is is is, yeah, sure. is the goat? Uh, I'll give you two answers. Uh, there's no such thing, but if you're going to rank players and you're going to say, "Look, just do it for fun," give me a top. 10, give me a top 20, top 30, because a lot of Michael Jordan fans, sometimes they actually get annoyed if you don't give them a ranking. Um, There's lots of players, like I said earlier, who are better than Michael Jordan, that are better than Michael Jordan, lots. If if I told you how how many, you would scratch your head, actually. Okay. Yeah, I'm all ears. Okay, so I'll give you an example, um, because I know if I just tell you, you may not agree. So I just want to throw this at you logically. If someone said to you, Michael Jordan is number one, but Kobe Bryant's number 49. Do you see how they're not being consistent? Because they have two similar players way off, right? Oh, yeah. That, that, that I, you're okay. right. I wouldn't agree with that. That wouldn't make sense. So, so apply that logic 
to the other players. In other words, if someone says Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is number one, then you have to be consistent and pick someone similar to him, like Will Chamberlain, Hakeem Olajuwon, Moses Malone. You have to be consistent. So when someone says, just like you agreed with me, Michael Jordan can't be number one and Kobe Bryant can't be 49 because they're not consistent. You have to have similar players. So apply that same logic to other people. So how many players are better than Michael Jordan? Now this is where you're going to scratch your head, man. Uh, have an open mind, okay? Okay. Okay. If I were to rank players, which I don't, I don't rank players at all. There's no such thing as a, this guy's number one, this guy's number 14, this guy's number 28, and so on. But if I were to do it, I'm not even sure if Michael Jordan's a top 100 NBA player of all time. Oh, wow. But remember that's, the logic I gave lot. you about consistency? Yeah. Yeah, so you have to be consistent. So if, if I said to you Kareem was better than Michael Jordan, you'd be open-minded, right? Uh, yeah, I would be open-minded to that. Kareem, Kareem okay, did his thing. If I said, if I, right, now if I said to you Will Chamberlain was better than Michael Jordan, you'd be open-minded to that too, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, Will Chamberlain, yes, okay. definitely. And, and, and if I, right, and if I said Larry Bird was better than Michael Jordan, you'd be open-minded to that too, right? I don't know about Larry. I I I. <laughs> As much as I love Larry, he was a great shooter. I don't know about better than Jordan. But you'd, but you'd understand, like, what I mean is you don't have to agree, but you'd be open to someone saying that, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Right. So, so, so there you go. And, and so on. Apply that logic now to other players. It keeps going. In other words, if you can be open-minded to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and then Wilt Chamberlain and then Larry Bird, and then you find other players who, are, who you could be open-minded about, you can actually find – a hundred players better than Michael Jordan. You just—it's the same logic. You just go one guy at a time. You can do it. The problem is when you tell people Michael Jordan's not top 100, to them it's like you're saying the earth is flat. They just don't understand the logic. But if you go one at a time, you say, well, are you open to this guy? How about that guy? How about this guy? And so on. They will say yes, 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 yes. And pretty soon you got 14 guys. Then you got 28 guys. Then you got 49 guys, and so on. And in case you still don't agree. Let me just remind you, remember those lists that they had, the NBA's top 50, NBA's top 75 lists? Mm -hmm. Yep. They left off a lot of guys, and a lot of people let it go. So if it's okay to leave off Alex English and Artis Gilmore and Adrian Dantley and a bunch of other guys, why logically is it not okay to leave off Michael Jordan? Yeah, you know the league is not going to do that or any survey – they wouldn't do that just because of the exposure that Michael Jordan has. That's right. That's right. But, but money and popularity and, and marketing and all that have nothing to do with who's better than who. In other words, just because if you play on the playgrounds, you can be the best player, even if you're not making money and you're not famous, you're not being marketed and all that. I, I'm trying to get people to think logically and be consistent. You don't have to agree with me on anything. But just be con uh, you means anyone who disagrees, just be consistent. If one guy can be better than Michael Jordan and two guys can be better and three guys can be better, why stop there? Keep it going. And if you can leave other people off of these lists, why not Michael Jordan? A lot of people are very brainwashed by the media on Michael Jordan or they have a bias for Michael Jordan. You know, they grew up with Michael Jordan or something like that. But I, I can assure you, man, there is no fact, literally no fact to prove that he's the greatest, or he should be top 100 all time. Interesting. Yeah, that's an interesting point of view. I, I'm glad you told me that. I didn't look at it like that. But, yeah, I mean, you're right. People should always be open-minded. They should always be open-minded. And you're right. A lot of Jordan, pro-Jordan fans, they're not going to hear anything else other than Michael Jordan is the greatest. But I am open-minded, right. and, and, and I'm not all pro-Jordan. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so can I ask you, can I ask you, after everything I told you, how sure. do you feel about my original statement? My original statement to you was Michael Jordan fans are the worst sports fans of all time. And have you changed your mind that he should be ranked as a number one NBA player of all time? And have you changed your mind about LeBron James being the only guy, you know, similar to him? And have you changed your mind about anything yeah. at all? Yeah, if, if you're comparing Michael Jordan to some of those guys you mentioned, Will Chamberlain, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, yeah, I, I agree with you. He's not going to be a GOAT against those guys. But 
most people, okay. you know, when they have the GOAT conversation, they're talking usually about Jordan and others. And, you know, that's just how it usually goes. But, yeah, I definitely will be open to that. And, and I, think about I, I that, definitely by the way. do think am about open-minded to, to hearing other people's arguments, whether they're for Jordan or against Jordan. Okay. I, I actually think um, that I, I, you might scratch your head on this too, but I, I want to see what you say. I actually think that Michael Jordan is the most overrated sports star in the history of mankind. Wow. That's saying a lot. <laughs> you want me to back that up? I could back it up if you want. I can literally back Please. it up. Please. No opinions. Okay. Look at some of the things they say about him. And you don't have to agree with each thing. You can say, I don't agree with this. I don't agree with that. Focus on each dot. Look at the whole picture, the whole thing together. They say he's the number one NBA player of all time. They say even in the future, he will always be the number one NBA player of all time. They did a poll on ESPN, and he was the number one college player of all time. They determined on ESPN – this is a documentary around 1998 or so, that he was the number one athlete of the entire 20th century. They called him the number one scorer of all time. They called him the number one defender of all time. And I could give you way more examples, but you get the point. The point is, look at how they've overrated him. Now ask yourself, have you ever heard of as many ridiculous things for any other sports star in the history of mankind? Yeah, Jordan's up there. I agree with you on that. He's up there. No, you know, he's up no, but there. The question, no, but the question – no, but have you heard of any, any sport? I don't care what sport. Any sport, even if it's ping pong. Have you ever heard of any athlete, any game player on pool tables, hockey player, whatever, where they have overrated a, a guy or girl more than Michael Jordan? The answer is no. That's no. why I've come to the conclusion yeah, I agree. he's the most over – so then if you agree, then would, how do you feel about when I say – that Michael Jordan is the most overrated sports star in the history of mankind. I, I don't know if I would go that far. I mean, I just don't. Oh. Okay, yes, 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 I do think the media does hype up Michael Jordan. And and I do think he definitely got the betterment of having, not not that he didn't do his thing, but I definitely do think the fact that he had such a stellar team and at the mm-hmm. time, at the time that he played, it was kind of like all the stars kind of lined up for him, meaning yep. he, he, he did have very good competition, so the competition was fierce. The fact that he didn't beat the Jazz twice, to me, that was – I thought the Jazz were going to get him the second time around, and they did. But Remember, he never beat them. He never beat them. Yeah, and I, I just think – I just think that I don't want to tear down Michael Jordan. I, I respect his game. I, I do. I definitely, I definitely do think he, you know, he he didn't do it by himself, but he was right. a marketing. He was a marketing machine. You know, you're, to your point, you know, he definitely. In order for you to get to that point of Michael Jordan, you have to say the right things, and he knows how to say the right things in front of a camera. No doubt about That's it. That's true. He does. So, so let me yeah. ask you. So if you don't agree that he is the most overrated sports star of all time, remember, I didn't give you every example. I just gave you a few. Yeah. If those things didn't convince you, then here's a question. What would it take for you to be convinced that he is the most overrated sports star of all time? Wow, that's a good question. You know, I, I don't know if I, if I could feel that way just because I just definitely do think that I can understand his allure to fans and why they would be attracted to a guy like Michael Jordan. He also backed it up mm-hmm. on the court, meaning he did play fantastic. He did his thing. And I'm just that type of person who doesn't like to take away credit from somebody else's hard work. You know? But no, but am I am I taking away credit from him? Because I have never knocked him as a player. No, but I don't know about the most overrated of all time. I mean, there's been some players that were pretty good, not maybe as long as Michael Jordan, of course. Jordan, you know, he had a pretty decent career. There's some guys that come up and play, and I think the the media attach themselves to them, and they give them a bunch of hype for a period of time, and I think it's overblown. But I don't know about 
if they give that same type of person years and years of coverage like they'd give Michael well, Jordan. Well, let me, well, so let me, let me ask you. Take basketball out of this because I don't want you to have a bias for basketball. Think of a sport that you don't know much about. Is, is, there, is, is there a sport you can tell me just so, real quickly so I can just tell you about that sport? Give me a sport you don't know much about. I don't know much about soccer. I'll be, okay, be honest. What if I told you there was a so- what if I told you there was a soccer player who was the greatest? He'll always be the greatest in the future. He was the best college player, best scorer, best defender, best athlete of the 20th century. Um, uh, what was the other one? I don't remember. Best. Uh, uh, what was the other one? Uh, I don't know. Best uh, uh, has the best statistics of all time. And there's many, many more examples I didn't give you. If I told you all that about that soccer player, you would probably think. That must be some soccer player. Is that all true? Or you would think that can't be true, right? Right, right. You probably think one or okay. the other. Now, right, okay. So now, you know all those things are not true about Michael Jordan, right? Right. Okay, so then what's the other one? That means it's not true. So that means he's overrated. And if you oh, say, yeah. well, hey, he might be overrated, but he's not the most overrated of all time – then you just have to ask yourself, don't even believe me. I don't want you to believe me. Ask yourself, can you think of any other player in any sport who has more ridiculous things by fans about that soccer player, or in this case, about Michael Jordan? And remember, I didn't even tell you all of them. I just gave you a few. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely do think Michael Jordan, the the issue I have with Michael Jordan more than anything is that I think he's kind of fake. Okay, that's fine, but I, but I feel like you're right there. I feel like I got you almost in the door, but not yet. I, I still want to know, man, because I really want to – you seem very open-minded. You don't seem like you're, like, um, strict. You don't seem like you're mean or anything like that. So I really want to know, if, if you know no one else has as many ridiculous things about that soccer player, wouldn't you say that soccer player is the most overrated soccer player of all, of all time in sports and apply that logic to Michael Jordan? If you know – there's nobody else who has as many ridiculous things said about them by the fans. Wouldn't you then say, okay, Michael Jordan is the most overrated sports star of all time? I don't know if I could go that far. I, I just because uh. I do think he's he's great. I mean, I, I understand you're not the biggest Michael Jordan fan, but one thing that my dad used to always tell me is, don't take credit where credit is due. Meaning, yes, Michael Jordan may be, may not be. And, and depending on who you're comparing him to, the greatest of all time. But I can't discredit okay. what the man has done. But no, but remember, I never discredit him. If I say he's not the, if I say to you he's not going to always be the greatest in the future, that's not discrediting him. That's just saying that's a stupid take. That's overrating him. If I said to you he's not the best college basketball player of all time, I'm not discrediting him. I'm just saying that's a stupid take. They're overrating him. My purpose is not to show you that he sucks. I never said he's terrible. I never said he can't play or anything like that. I'm questioning his zombie fans who who do lots of who have lots of strange takes about him. Uh, they're like a cult. They're they're really in love with him. They're brainwashed about him. Um, and remember, I asked you earlier if you're not convinced that he's the most overrated sports star of all time. I asked you what would it take to convince you. Uh, and you're still like, you just can't let it go. You know what I mean? So, but, but seriously, what would it take? How many examples would I have to give you for you to say, okay, maybe he's the most overrated sports star of all time, or maybe he is the most overrated sport. Like he is actually the most overrated sports star of all time. I, I don't know if I, I don't, I would have to do, you'd have to do a lot for me to say that. Cause it's just, I, I've seen some players that are really good that have been overrated for uh-huh. a long period of time, but not as long as Jordan simply because they haven't played as long as him. You understand? No, like, but no, but you don't have to. Have, yeah, but but forget about that. Let's say they played one second, or they never went to the NBA. Wouldn't you actually do this? Wouldn't you say, let's count how many ridiculous things they they say about Michael Jordan, or how they act about Michael Jordan, and then let's count what they do for whoever the other guy is, whoever the guy is, and then put it together, and just whoever has the most would would be the guy or girl. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you got a good point. Uh, but I don't know if I if I would go that far with with Jordan. I mean, to say he's the most overrated of all time, I don't feel that way. I, I definitely understand where you're coming from. There are some fans that are not going to hear anything other than Michael Jordan being the greatest. I get that, but okay. I don't know if I would go that but, far. It's, 
saying he's the most overrated of all time because I just so I should I should, I should ask you do do you think those maybe you disagree with me do you think the examples I gave you are not good examples like for example do you think he'll always be the greatest in the future do you think he's the best college player of all time do you think he's the best uh, two way player of all time and and you know, there's more examples but you get the point yeah I don't know if he'll always be the greatest of all time I mean you know there I I definitely do think. In, if you're comparing him in the era, the era that he played in, uh-huh. compared to now, uh-huh. I don't think there's anybody that's real close to him. If you compare him to Wilt or those other guys, yes. Individually, yes. But I just think that Michael Jordan was definitely a transcendent player, meaning he got people interested in basketball. And to this day, people he's still relevant. That's the amazing thing about what, him is what, that – there's actually a lot of problems with that, so I disagree with pretty much all that. But and I, I don't mind getting into it. But I want to go to the overrated part. You know, you gotta, I want to go one at a time. So, so if you if you agree that he's not going to always be the greatest in the future, and he's not the best college player, and he's not the best two way player, if you agree with these kinds of examples, and remember I have more which I didn't list for you, wouldn't you at some point say, okay, I agree with this, I agree with that, I agree with this, I'm agreeing with all these examples. So then maybe he is the most overrated sports star of all time, or he is the most overrated sports star of all time? Because if you're not, what does it mean to agree with all these points? You know, it's longevity. It, it, that's the thing. He, he's, he's played – like, I, I don't think he's the most overrated of all time because I, I know some players that played for a shorter period of time. Maybe they had a great mm-hmm. season or two, and the right. media went went off the – you know. Every other minute was about them, but so there has been players that I think for a short period of time were well mm-hmm. overrated. But I don't know if I would say that he's the I, most I see overrated. What you're all I, time. I see what you're saying. Okay, good. I see. So we're having a misunderstanding. So what I what I meant was, um, so if those players that you're thinking about, who the media goes off on, they played for a short time. Let's say they said eight stupid things about those players. Oh, this is the next coming of Michael Jordan, or man, he's the best rebounder. Or, you know, he's the best college player. Whatever they're saying about him that you're saying is overrating them, what I'm asking you is, if you find more things with Michael Jordan, then wouldn't he be the number one guy of uh, being the most overrated sports star of all, kind, all time? I mean, he could be, but I, don't, I, don't, I couldn't agree with you on that. I, I will say that much. I couldn't say I would say he's, Michael Jordan is the most overrated of all time. I'm sorry. I can't. So is it, I know so, you want me so, to no, get there, fine. but I can't. I can't, no, no, I can't no, agree no, with no, you. No, no, it's okay. I want to understand you. Believe me, as you can tell, I'm not like a mean person. I want to understand you. So are you saying that even if you find more things with Michael Jordan, you just can't get to the final conclusion? Is that what it is? Yeah, I can't go to that conclusion where I say he's the most overrated of all time. Even saying that, you know, he may not be the GOAT of all time, I wouldn't say he was the most overrated, meaning because he was he was a great player. You know what I mean? Like, and, and the fact that he retired and came back, you know, like mm-hmm. he, he went through a lot. His dad passed away, you know, and that was you know rest in peace to his, to his well, there's father. There's a lot of problems with that. There's a lot of problems. There's, there's yeah. a lot of problems with that argument too. Uh, and I, I I don't want you to think I'm ignoring your points. I, I'm happy to address all those, but I still I, I still want to understand your overrated part. So so even if you let's say you took a guy like Kawhi Leonard, okay, and let's say yeah. you thought he was overrated, and you said here's my reasons why I think he's overrated. Here's 21 reasons. Okay, I'm just making up an example. And then for Michael Jordan, I found you 49 reasons. 49 would be more than 21, so you would say, okay, Michael Jordan's the mo- more overrated than Kawhi Leonard. So I guess what I'm trying to ask you is if, if by chance you knew there were more questionable things about Michael Jordan being overrated than any other sports star, but you still wouldn't go that far to say he's the most overrated sports star of all time, what does that mean? Like, How, how do you connect that? Okay, because I don't feel as if there's enough question marks to his game for me to feel that okay, he's the most overrated of all time. I don't I like yes, I maybe some things I might go out of context, but I don't think there's enough questions there to, for me to add up and say okay, now he's the most overrated of all time. That, I that's, see. I, that's you know that's what I thought it was. Okay, so we have a different definition of overrated. Overrated doesn't mean that you suck or you have question marks or you know not a Hall of Fame or all that. Overrated just means you're you're rated higher than you should be. Right. Correct. So let so, me ask you a question. So if, yeah, yeah. What do you get out of, yeah, go ahead, of of 
let's say hypothetically I was going to agree with you, what would that would would that make you feel better? Like the fact that I'd agree with you that oh people, no no <laughs> before I answer that and I'm going to answer I'm not going to dodge your question. I would get out of it the same thing that you would get out of it when you have a program and you bring up topics and you debate people or whatever it is you do um, that other people or other people do. When you go over topics, you just bring up topics. You try to convince the world. You, you try to get, you know, maybe, maybe you want to build up a YouTube page. Maybe you want to make money, get famous or whatever, or you just want to have a conversation and understand the other side of it. You're trying to go over things, whatever. Um, so lots of people do these things. Now, if you want to ask me personally, what do I get? I'll, I'll tell you right now if you want. Oh, sure. Okay, sure. One of the things I get out of this, I actually, you're going to laugh at me, man. Uh, well, I made a YouTube page literally called Michael Jordan fans are the worst sports fans of all time. And okay. one of the things I do on there, I'm not kidding. I, I'm being serious. It's not my main YouTube page, just so you know. It's not my main page. It's a second second NBA page. My main one is much more. Um, but one of the things I do on there is I try to educate people and show people how Michael Jordan fans, they can't let go of Michael Jordan. They contradict themselves. They, they deny facts and so on. So I don't consider you someone who's like a, a, a real hardcore zombie Michael Jordan fan. Uh, n- not at all. Uh, you've been very nice and open-minded and, you know, you're willing to go over things and all that. But at the end of the day, based on many things that you've said, there's no doubt you are uh, – respectfully, man, I'm saying this respectfully. You're a very typical type of Michael Jordan fan. I hope you don't take that in a negative way. No, not at all. I don't. I don't. I mean, I, I, it's it's hard for you to admire someone, their game on the field, uh, on the court, I should say, and see their greatness and at the same to- token not be a fan of what they're doing. You understand what I'm saying? Like if if I, I watch, so think of it like this: What if you liked the What if you liked the movie? What if you really loved the movie? And you said, "Man, this movie was so entertaining. Man, I, I don't mind spending the money on this movie. Man, this movie is the greatest movie of all time, and all that." There's nothing wrong with you thinking those things. But then, if someone said this movie um, was, you know, loved by the president of the United States, and it should be in the Constitution, and it should represent planet Earth, and other silly things, at some point you would say. They're overrating the movie, and that's what I'm trying to get to. I'm not trying to take away from Michael Jordan. I don't think he sucks. I'm not saying he's not an all-star. I'm not saying he's not a Hall of Famer and all that. I'm saying people have overrated him to the level of ridiculous, and the only thing I can do to prove it to you is show you example after example after example and so on. But the problem is you're basically telling me after all the examples I've shown you, and I assume if I keep showing you more, it won't change much – that you just can't label him as the most overrated sports star of all time. I think there's a problem there because you're essentially saying, nope, I'm closing the door no matter what. And you're also saying the examples you gave me, I'm just going to dismiss them. I don't think I would dismiss them, but I don't, it's, I don't feel as if it's an outlier, meaning I, I don't, if when I would say overrated of all time, I would think that he was pretty good or good and you made him seem like he was the best thing that ever played. You understand what I'm saying? Like like you said to I, your point, I, he doesn't yeah. suck. He's he's an all star. He was very good. But you know what I would like to do? Because I have to turn to another topic now. What I would like to do though oh. is watch some of your content on YouTube and invite you to come okay. back on the show and this way I get a chance to get more examples and see more of your point or do your videos. And I will tell you if I sure, if sure. I agree with them more so that I got more information. Sure, no, that's very nice of you. And if you want, if you like debates on that page, you can actually hear debates where I debate Michael Jordan fans one on one. So that way you get the other side of the story. I try to show the other side and listen to what they say. Listen to how they deny facts, contradict themselves, and move the goalposts, and so on. And you will slowly understand how they are zombies. They are a cult. They are in love. They're, they're in love with Michael Jordan. They're brainwashed about him. Um, I, I assume you're about to end the call, right? Yeah, I have to move on to another topic. But, but I definitely would like okay, you to no come problem. back on so we and know yeah, more sure. about your channel. Well, thank you. You know, thank you. You've been very nice to me. I, I want to thank you for all your time. You were very respectful and all that. And I, I, I hope you want to go on my show. If you ever want to go on, just send me an email. Um, and before sure. I leave, um, do, do you have time if I just throw out some two topics for the future? If you don't want to, sure. it's okay. Don't worry. Okay. Do, no, do, no, do you only do sports or what, what do you do? Just to make sure on your, on your show, what kind of topics oh, do you have? 
during this time of the show, it's usually about sports, but I I have other guests that come on to, during the week that talk about other topics other than sports. If it's something interesting, I'm always open. Okay, great. I got three topics for you. If you ever want to do something with me, let me know. If you're not interested, no hard feelings, man. Um, sure. I'll, I'll try to be as fast as I can. I know, I know you got to move on. Uh, here's three topics. Uh, one topic is Republicans are worse than Democrats. Okay. Say it again. No, I got you. Republicans are worse than Democrats. Okay, right. Uh, the second topic is um, when you buy something that comes from an animal, like whatever you, whatever ice cream or cheese or meat or mayonnaise, do you know the details of how they torture and kill the animals? And how do you, con- if you do, how do you convince yourself that it's okay then? Yeah, that's a that's a good point. You know. When you yeah. when you don't when and you the, think about those details, it'll horrify you. You're right about that. That's right. And the third topic, I don't know if you're going to raise an eyebrow or not, but so far you've been pretty cool with me, so I hope you don't. Um, and actually, you shouldn't raise an eyebrow because it's a very normal topic. But I'm going to throw it out there uh, to let you know that a lot of people raise an eyebrow. But I'm going to throw it out there then. Um, <clears throat> You know, when a guy is in high school, he's like, you know, like most heterosexual guys, he wants to like basically, he checks out all the girls, he wants to have sex with them, he tries to hit on them, or whatever. It doesn't have to be all those things, but you know, things like that. Yeah, we've all met those okay. kind of people, you know? he, Yeah, but you know, guys like girls, right? They're heterosexual, they want to be with girls and all that, right? Yes. Okay, when he graduates high school, he turns 18, he graduates high school, do you know any religion – or anywhere in science, or anywhere in the law, or anywhere in common sense that says, now that he turned 18 and graduated high school, he's not supposed to be attracted to girls in high school then. Okay. So you're saying that he's 18, he can't be attracted to somebody who's still in high school. Uh, Do you know any, any reason, basically, that should make you think that? Mm, no, I mean that was a tough one. I, that was a tough one. <laughs> That's, I, it's actually pretty. It's actually pretty easy, man. It's like uh, I, you know, I, I can explain it, but I know you got to go. But it's actually very easy. There's no religion. There's nowhere in science. There's nowhere in the law. And there's nowhere in common sense that says when a heterosexual guy turns 18, now he has to all of a sudden stop being attracted to girls in high school. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's an interesting topic. Yeah, so those are some topics oh, and, for you. I don't mind getting into. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, so go ahead. What's your YouTube channel for the the Jordan? Yeah, uh, the the main channel or the second one, the Michael Jordan one. The Michael Jordan, yes. Yeah, the the Michael Jordan one is literally called Michael Jordan fans are the worst sports fans ever. Okay. <laughs> It's really easy to find, man. I, I just put a video today where I debated a Michael Jordan fan. Uh, it was for over an hour. Wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I'll definitely check it out. And, hey, you're always more than welcome to come back. And, and I will watch a lot of those videos. I, I'm, I'm curious to hear some of the people's takes. And your takes more you. deeper into your takes, too. So th- thank you, thank you, man. I hope you email me and set something up. A lot of times I'll call a blog talk radio show or YouTube show, and the host will be nice like you and says, let's hey, let's work together in the future, and then they, they never contact me. A lot of times they don't contact me after that. So I really hope you contact me after that. But if you don't, no hard feelings then. No, I definitely will. And you're, I get your email right on the YouTube channel. Is that right? That's right. It's right there, yeah. Like I said, okay. it's not my main page, but it's, it's my second NBA page. Yep, you got my word. I'll check it out. You got it. Okay, thanks, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for you all welcome. your time. Thank you for being very nice. Thank you for being respect, very respectful. Uh, thanks you, thank you for being very fair. Oh, you're more than welcome. Same here. I appreciate you. Okay. Thanks so much thank for calling you, in. Thank you. All right. Stay safe. Thanks. You're welcome. Bye. Great weekend. <clears throat> yes, that was great. So awesome conversation. Glad to hear from our great fans and always great to hear things from their point of view. So that's awesome. I'm definitely going to check out that channel, get some more insight. Michael Jordan fans are the worst ever. (laughs) Yeah. So yeah, uh, definitely we're going to go ahead and switch gears a bit now. And I'm going to talk is in fact, I'm going to talk more about basketball. 
I'm going to talk about the recent interaction with Patrick Beverly with a reporter who wasn't subscribed to his podcast. For those who didn't see it, it's hard for me to kind of download it and show it to you guys because it was kind of rough. But I will kind of explain a bit about it. Patrick Beverly was upset because the team uh, lost. And he asked a female reporter that was standing to the right of him. She had a microphone in her hand. He had asked her, hey, are you subscribed to my channel? And it was a little different because typically the athletes are usually answering a question, but he asked the, he actually asked her a question and she politely and respectfully said, no, I'm not. She didn't lie. She said, no, I'm not. And then he basically told her, well, put your microphone down, you know, from his face. And he wasn't going to answer any question from her unless you subscribe to his podcast channel. She did say that somebody she was with to the right of her, I'm sorry, where she was standing at to the right of her was subscribed to to his channel, but that wasn't good enough for him. So she did lower the microphone. And at this point, basically just watching this interaction, me being somebody who's covered the media, who's been in her shoes, it was pretty much a given at this point. She was not going to get a question asked and answered by him. He made it very clear, you're not subscribed to my channel, put your microphone down. So she was going to basically just stand there and not get a question answered at all, you know. But that wasn't even good enough because – so now another reporter is asking him a question to the left, and you could see Patrick Beverly was in his feelings. And he still was thinking about the fact that this woman was not subscribed to his channel. So now he just told her to put a microphone down. And to me, I'm interpreting that as if I'm her, gee, I ain't get no question asked. This is just a, you know, I'm just standing here. Basically, it's not going to happen because you're not going to answer my question now. He goes even further and says, oh, put your microphone way down. And he kind of pushes the microphone way away from her, which was unnecessary, which is way extra. You could tell he was, he like took it personally that she was not subscribed to the channel. And then he went a third time. And told him to move to her to move away. Like, okay, Patrick Beverly, this has to be like the worst sales pitch ever. When you are selling something or marketing something, no matter who you are, whether you're a celebrity, whether you're somebody who's just starting off a business, whether you're a kid trying to sell lemonade, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, unfortunately, not everybody's going to buy your product or service, even if it is, as we had the last caller, even if it's better, even if you think it's better than Michael Jordan, it is prime or whatever, or it's the GOAT item or product or service. And if you're selling something, you should feel as if you're selling the best, the GOAT product or service or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, unfortunately, with selling or advertising or marketing, it's not a hundred. It's not a thousand percent batting average. Not everybody's going to buy your product or service, even if it's phenomenal. That's the nature of the beast. That's how it goes. And Patrick Beverly, to me, was being real extra. And in fact, I think he was actually bullying the girl. He was being abusive to the girl, to the reporter. I know that ESPN is is putting down a whip saying that hey, he can't now go on ESPN and be interviewed anymore. I really do think he should be fined for that, and I do think the league should do more because how do you tell someone because you're not subscribed to my podcast, I'm not going to answer any of your questions. You know, I'm an author of a book. That's like me telling someone, oh, you didn't buy my book? Oh, I'm not answering no questions from you. Oh, you didn't buy it? Come on. You can't tell people that. You you just can't treat people like that because at the end of the day, you know what? The way she re- she answered his question when he first originally asked her, hey, are you subscribed to my channel? She said, no, I'm not. She said it nicely. If he would have probably just said to her, hey, you know, if you want more insight on some things I won't answer or people don't ask me, check out my podcast. She seemed like the type of person that may have actually checked into it. She may not have definitely subscribed. You don't know. But you can't treat people that way. That's the way it goes in sales. You're not going to convince everyone to buy everything. Michael Jordan, 
Even Kobe Bryant, he had products that he used to market and sell. Did I buy all of them? No. Same thing with Michael Jordan or whoever. Even if I'm a fan of theirs, it doesn't mean I'm going to buy every single product or service they're selling or every single foundation that they support. You know, there's just so much hours in a day, so much resources you have, unless you're Warren Buffett or Bill Gates, somebody like that, where you just, you know, money ain't no thing. You can buy anything. Usually there's a limitation on resources. And not everybody's going to subscribe to your podcast. I didn't even know Patrick Beverly had a podcast. I know Draymond Green had one and a few of the other players, but you can't treat people like that. You can't treat people like that. It's unacceptable. I think he owes her an apology. I, I Again, I thought he was bullying her and, be, and a very, being very abusive to her. I, I really do think that way. I really don't. I, I really do think that it was not even clown behavior like Patrick Beverly does. I just think he was being abusive to her, and being a bully. Hey, you're not. And he got into his feelings. Hey, you're not. It's like he got personally upset that she didn't subscribe to his to his podcast. Hey, I have a podcast too. Open invitation for you guys to listen, chime in, call in, listen. You know, subscribe to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the blog talk, whatever. It's open. Open door policy. Do I want you to subscribe and support? Of course, but you can't. I can't come across that if you don't do this, I'm not doing anything for you. It's self-absorbed. It's self. It's being conceited. Hey, you don't do this for me, man. You don't subscribe for me. I'm not answering none of your questions. Come on now. Imagine if every single NFL player or NBA player was that way. Hey, if you're not subscribed, like, who would you subscribe to? You're going to subscribe to everyone's podcast and actually listen to them? Come on now. That's ridiculous. And for the NBA playoffs, I would just say also to, you know, LeBron James and the Knicks, I'm to LeBron James and the Lakers, Greg Parted, get eliminated, and the coach gets fired. I would say this much about LeBron. As much as I do respect his game, and I do, I do think he is one of the all-time greats of this basketball game. I do think he has a different legacy than Michael Jordan. I think a lot of people like to compare Michael Jordan and LeBron, but I look at LeBron as having a different type of career than Michael Jordan. And what I mean by that is it's a different era. It's a different time. I don't feel as if LeBron James has had the same type of support Michael Jordan has. He hasn't had like an all-star type, Hall of Fame type team that kind of went along the process year after year after year. Nowadays, LeBron has teamed up with a young cat who doesn't have the same mindset or even look at the game the same way LeBron does. LeBron wants to win every year. These guys in the league just want to get a paycheck. They want to get a paycheck. I take that back. They want to get a paycheck and they want to look good on Instagram. They, you know, they want to get a bunch of followers on Instagram and look good on social media and stuff like that. And, and that's not all of what LeBron is about. He's about winning championships. So there's a gap there. And, but I do think, uh, you know, LeBron James is a drama queen. Here's a perfect example. In the, the press conference right before they were getting eliminated, they started asking him questions about, hey, you know, what do you think, what do you think about your team being down? What do you think about your chances? What are you going to do next? And he's like, well, I'm not going to answer that. It's like, he's like a drama queen. And then he's also a big time flopper. Like, he's the worst flopper. Now, I will say this much about Jordan that I think a lot of people overlook versus LeBron James. Michael Jordan complained a lot, too, when he played. If you pay attention, he complained a lot to the to the refs. He may not have been throwing temper tantrums like LeBron, but he has spent a lot of time being in the ear of officials. I will say that much. But LeBron James, I think the flopping, the, you know, the – oh, I don't agree with the replay center, and I think it's crap that they didn't re- overturn things. Look, you were you were up by 20. 
your team and you didn't close out the game. It has nothing to do with the replay center. It has nothing to do with the referee. You let the other team back in the door and you lost the game. Plus, your team is not as good as the team that beat you. Period. Collectively. You know, I think LeBron James is is a great player. I think he's going to have a lot of of almost all the records because he's played for so long and he's it's his credit. He takes great care of his body. He stays motivated. He wants to continue to play. But I, I just don't feel as if if you're comparing him to Jordan, as much as I kind of do want LeBron to get it, believe it or not, I know the last caller would think differently. I actually do want LeBron, and there was a time before he lost the last two finals, I would say, that LeBron had an outside shot at it. I don't think he has a shot at it now because he's, what, four out of nine? And not only that, he he he's now his team is not even making it to the finals anymore. It, it's just too big of a gap at this point. And I just don't think as much as I would want LeBron to make it, I do. I think he's going to have a different legacy, but I just don't think he's catching. And it's not just the finals. It's just the overall competition versus Jordan. And having said that, we got a call online. Hey, how you doing? Hey, I, it's me again, man. <laughs> Is it okay, great. Back? How you doing again? <laughs> I do. I do. You know, if you say no, I'll, I'll, I'll respect it. Um, you were saying some things about LeBron James and all that. I thought, you know what? You and I had good chemistry. It was entertaining for the fans, I'm sure. Uh, we you know we had a good call. So I thought, let me roll the dice and try again. Do you mind? No, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, you said some things about LeBron James and Michael Jordan. I got a question on. Um, um, can I ask you? Have you noticed with Michael Jordan fans, you guys always have to point the finger at LeBron James. Have you noticed that? Yeah. I mean, because you know what? I that's a good. That's a great point. The thing about LeBron is because I think people know. Maybe LeBron has never said it. I don't know if he's actually ever came out publicly and said it. But it's pretty clear that LeBron James wants to surpass Jordan. At least it's clear to me or anybody who watches the game. Now, is that his goal? Is, 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 it, fair not to, be. is, is it fair to say that? He, is it fair to say he probably already thinks he passed him? Yes, I agree with you. That that's one okay. thing that we we okay. agree with. He probably already thinks it in his okay. mind. Yes, the way LeBron is. Okay, so. So what's so, so let's say he didn't pass them, or let's say he tied with them, or let's say he passed them. Whatever, whatever someone thinks. If someone is thinking, okay, you know what, I want to catch them, or I'm tied with them, or I'm I passed them. Why is why is any of those things something that respectfully you Michael Jordan fans have to question him about? Why can't it just be a sports thing and that's it? Yes, and, and that's a great point. I agree. You're probably right. LeBron probably thinks he already surpassed him in his mind. The way LeBron looks at things, I, I I would think that. In fact, I pretty much would think 100% that. It's not bad for LeBron but, to think that way. It, you understand? It, okay. you, you're entitled to your own opinions. You're, you're entitled to your thought process. And if I was LeBron, maybe I would think that too because LeBron is going to have a lot of almost all the records. There's no doubt about it. But oh, not 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 maybe. If you were LeBron James, you would think you passed Michael Jordan. Think about this logically. If you were LeBron yeah. James in the NBA and you were as good as him and all that, there's no reason for you to think you're not actually better than Michael Jordan, unless you just wanted to be humble or something. Say, oh, I don't think like I'm better than people. I don't want to act like I'm higher or like I'm on top and all that. That's different. But if as a player, if you weren't thinking about being humble and acting like you don't care about being conceited and you don't care about acting high and mighty and all that. If someone were to ask you, Hey man, um, are you better than Michael Jordan? You would say, yeah. Or you would think, yeah. I, and I do think if you compare playing just Michael Jordan and LeBron James, I do think LeBron James mm-hmm. is a better player. I do. I do right. think he's a okay. better player. However, okay. but there is a difference between, I, I think someone has a better playing versus somebody who has a better career, if that makes sense. So Okay, so I, thing- it, makes, it makes sense what you're saying, but just to clarify so I understand you, 
what is the difference in when it comes to your criteria? What is the difference between being a better player and being a better having a better career? Again, I think I know what you mean, but yeah. I, I don't want to assume. I want to verify that. Okay, being a better player is that I think if LeBron James was, let's say, LeBron James was playing in, in those finals that Michael Jordan played in, I, I think Le, Michael, I think LeBron James would do just as good in in most cases than, than Michael Jordan. I think he would score probably mm-hmm. more points. I think he would get more rebounds. I think he would mm-hmm. probably have more assists. The only thing I would question LeBron mm-hmm. on is towards the end of the game making the last shot. That's the only thing I would question him on. But I do think okay. career-wise, where I think it's hard for Jordan is because even if I gave James, you know, because he's been to the finals more than, than, than uh, Michael – I just think that the record in the finals is pretty poor. Where I do think remember he we talked about average. remember we talked about this earlier. Remember we talked about this earlier. One guy doesn't win and lose. And you know, True. if you're gonna act like a guy wins and a guy loses, then you have to be consistent. Now you gotta put it on Michael Jordan for losing. But I'm pretty sure you don't do that. Right, but okay, for example, I do think he should he being I think he should have beat the Dallas Mavericks. Meaning when they played with Dirk Nowitzki, Dirk Nowitzki and them mm-hmm. they, them boys just outbeat them. And I think at that year LeBron had a better team. Then I do think there was a couple of finals that 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 LeBron like I don't think LeBron was always on the underdog side, if that makes sense. I do think sometimes LeBron was on the favorite and just did not play well. But when no, but when a team loses or wins, many factors come into play. For example, there could be injuries. Another example, coaching. Another example, home court advantage. And there's other examples, but you get the point. The point is, many things have to be there for for why a team won and lost. But a lot of you, Michael Jordan fans, you you do this routine where you simply go, he won, he lost, he beat that guy, and so on. And even if I accept that, which I don't, but even if I accept that. There's a lack of consistency because you guys don't do the same thing for everyone else, including Michael Jordan. Like with James, I think – I don't think like James had to be perfect in the finals where he had to win every okay. single final. I wouldn't – no. But I do think if he, he has four, I think if he would have at least – there's at least two of them in there that I felt as if if you're the GOAT, you should have turned that mm-hmm. series around and won. So I think he should at least have six out of nine, or at least tied with so remember, Jordan. But, but remember, the, in the last phone, in the last phone call, you 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 acknowledged, and I, I was I'm, I'm agreeing with you that a guy doesn't win and lose; it's a team that wins and loses. But now you you go on the other side and you you put it on the guy for winning and losing, and then again you don't do the same thing for other people, including Michael Jordan. Well, see, the thing is with LeBron James in those series that I felt as if he lost two times. I felt the reason why he, they mm-hmm. lost is because of James. Is because he had good shots at the basket and he passed. Remember when when um, even James had said himself. James even said that when I started playing playoff basketball, I was not that good. He was too much of a facilitator. It, it, but no, but but if you're going to go by that logic, remember when Michael Jordan basically said, "A guy doesn't win a ring," and he also right. basically said, "You shouldn't use rings to rank players." Yeah, I mean, if you're going – but that's the thing. Like, I just feel as if the biggest thing with LeBron James is not just the statistics and things like that. I just feel as if Michael Jordan okay. has that that killer instinct. Like, he will like – wait, the wait. But, every, but can I ask you – so two quick questions. How do you define a killer instinct? And secondly, how do you know who has more or less of a killer instinct? the guy who's willing to take that last shot without thinking about it at the end, like Kobe Bryant. Then Michael, Mike, oh. M- Michael Jordan passed the ball many times. And you know that because you mentioned in the last call, I think you said John Paxson. He has Steve Kerr. Yes. Right. But it, the thing but about LeBron it is. has taken many clutch shots too. I just feel as if when the crunch time is on, I can trust more Michael Jordan than I can LeBron James. That's that's what I'm saying. Okay, like I feel like as, if as the game is going to come down to the clutch, yeah, yeah I, I would want Michael Jordan to have the ball in his hand. 
and that's fine. And I wouldn't say you're wrong or right, but it seems like, and please correct me if I'm wrong, it seems like you're not just questioning LeBron James. You're, you're uh, making it seem like Michael Jordan is a better clutch player, but there's no proof of that. And I, I, I ask you if you can just think back. Both of them made clutch shots. Both of them missed clutch shots. Both of them passed and so on. So how do you know who's a better clutch player? And then the other question you can ask yourself, if you were playing with them, okay, you're playing basketball with them, who would be more of a threat in the clutch? The guy who's going to probably hog the ball and score or the guy who could score and could pass? It's the guy, in other words, Matt, in other words, if you had Michael Jordan and Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan is a threat to score when, Magic, when he has the ball. But when Magic Johnson has the ball, he's a threat to score and everybody else is a threat to score. You see who's more dangerous in the clutch? Right. I mean, you could look at it like that. But when it comes to championship, game on the line, I just feel as if Michael Jordan has that it factor. Meaning, you can – you like, what he did against – what he did against Karl Malone. Stole the ball, went down, and scored. Without, without, like, like batting an eye. But but, But that's one sequence. That doesn't prove anything. Lots of players did something like that in one sequence where they got the rebound, they made the pass, they got the shot and all that. That's just marketing showing the same play over and over and over and then putting decorations on the video and having lots of they have like lots of nice music and all that and then getting brainwashed by it. How many how many Hall of Famers can you think of that can't steal the ball and dribble the ball and make the clutch shot and so on? They can all do it. But that's the thing. Michael Jordan has done it and not only that, I just think Hey, I wanted Mike. I wanted. I actually wanted LeBron James to surpass Jordan as far as the as and uh, if you're comparing the two of them against GOAT. But I just feel I as if I just feel as if LeBron James hasn't. He hasn't done it. Like okay, you, you you're not making the the playoffs now. You you but that's not his fault. a lot. That's like not, a lot of. I think a lot of things that LeBron James has done over the last. Let's say four or five years has been self mm-hmm. self inflicted his own greatness. No, but, with but the complaining. When you, but when you say, but, but, no, but when you say he hasn't done it, he all Hall of Famers can do these things, and he has done it. He has stolen the ball and made the block shot and made the clutch shot and all that. And when you say he's not making the finals, that's not his fault. It's not his fault that he's not making the finals. And if you say, well, uh, it is his fault. Why don't you say it's Michael Jordan's fault when he didn't make the finals? He was older with the Washington Wizards. He didn't make the finals. Do you, do you put it on him for that? You don't. Well, you no. Know? For the Washington Wizards, he was way past time. But he didn't make it against Detroit. And the thing about it is what I respect about Jordan was he said, you know what? I got to be more physical. I got to bulk up a little bit because these guys are, are, like, knocking me down. And he went back, worked real hard, and came back. And – he, but I do are, think you saying, are you James, saying all the other all the other years? No, are you saying all the other years he didn't work real hard and try to put on muscle and bulk up and all that? Like it just happened one year all of a sudden and then they won. No, but I mean, you know, the Detroit Pistons were a thorn in his side and he got past them and then you know he ended up beating them. See, the thing is like this: I, I definitely do think maybe it's because LeBron is is kind of nice and he does love the pass. I will give him that. You know, he's. He's not a ball hog, and he actually could be a ball hog, but he's nowhere near that. And I just just think that as much as I want LeBron to kind of like be that guy, he does over the last six, seven years, I feel as if he's he's hurt his case by not doing I, well. I, 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 I believe you. I, I, I believe you that you want him to pass Michael Jordan. I don't say you're wrong on that, but when you say things like, he's the biggest flopper of all time and you make it seem like he's not as clutch as Michael Jordan and you put it on him for losing and all the other things you've said where you're being a little questionable about him, that shows a different side. It, you, you're playing both sides where you act like you want him to pass him, but then you're being unfair to him. Like for example, when you say Michael Jordan got past the Detroit Pistons, he didn't get past them. His team beat them and they could have, the, the Pistons could have beat them again. It wasn't like, okay, we passed the Pistons and they're never going to play us again. The Pistons could have won the next year, but the Pistons didn't win after that because they had injuries. They got older. They traded a lot of their players and so on. Yeah. I mean, it's like this. When I say that is, but it's not my fault if LeBron James 
doesn't do well in the finals and he loses, and that's on your record. Like if you're to to be in the category of Michael Jordan, I'm not saying you got to be perfect. A lot of times, a lot of Michael Jordan fans would say, "Hey, you got." They they would automatically dismiss him because he's not perfect in the finals. And and I agree with you. That's an unfair comparison. As much as even Tom Brady is not perfect in the Super Bowl, but I just think that. I think there's too many losses in the finals. If you're going to be the greatest of all time, but are you you saying every time he lost, it's because he didn't do well? I'm saying there has been some times that he didn't, he lost that he didn't do well. If you check some of the finals that he lost, there's two of the finals mm -hmm. that they were the favorites. And I feel as if because LeBron did not play well in those series, not only did, did he hurt his team, that's the reason why they kind of lost. LeBron is a superstar. If that were true, if that were true, if that were true, then you have to explain a couple of logical things to me. One, how come most of his coaches, most of his teammates, most of his opponents, and so on, don't say he did bad all those times? And then also, how do you define bad? What's the definition of bad? Because what if he scored less, but he got more assists and got more rebounds? And Michael Jordan also had bad games in the finals. And he won. Um, and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good you are. You can get 100 points, 100 rebounds, 100 steals. You can do everything possible, and you can never win a game. Because no matter how much you play, no matter how good you are or bad you are or average you are whatever, oh. you may win, you may lose depending on the team. I want to remind you, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar missed a game with the Lakers against the Philadelphia 76ers, and the Lakers won. Yes, yes, that's absolutely a great point. In fact, I think somebody else wants to chime in and give their opinion. Let me just take that caller. Give me one second. Sure. This is fun, isn't it? (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to the Allen Alfred Sports Talk Show. Thank you, thank you. Hey, how you doing? How are you feeling today? Yeah, I'm all right. This is Naj, man. Yeah, y'all going back and forth on this, man. This is interesting. What's going on? Thank you. So, yes. That's a good point that, hey, where do you put the Michael Jordan versus LeBron James? Your open, honest opinion on that debate. Oh, okay, so I'm going to disappoint you guys to begin with, and, and then I'll, I'll, I'll get to that part. So the first thing is I'm, I'm of the thinking that I don't believe in GOATs. I believe there's a Hall of Fame. And then there's a separate room in the Hall of Fame where there's a certain tier. You see what I'm saying? So like a Carl Malone or a Clyde Drexler, they're Hall of Famers, but they don't get into that that room. That room, that's where Magic, Mike, Bron, Wilt, Kareem, that's where those guys are. And you oh. separate the Hall of Famers that way. That That's how I look at it. But as far as – just conversationally between the two, it, it, it's Mike one, man. I, I'm sorry, man. <laughs> it's Mike <laughs> over Bron, and, and, and that's not to diminish Bron, who who was great and dominated his era in a way that I don't think we'll see duplicated. Uh, as far as the longevity, uh, the ability during his prime to just steamroll, you know, a whole conference. Like those are things we're probably not going to see again for a long time. But the problem is the same way that Kareem's hook was Kareem's sky hook, Mike's fade away. I mean, dude, it's just a consistency and a dominance factor to those two moves in basketball that mean more than everything else on the court. You know what I mean? Uh, can I re- can I respond to him? Is that okay? Absolutely. Yes. Oh, thanks. Uh, you, uh, you know how I knew he was a Michael Jordan fan? Because when he started listing names of who should be in the room, he, and he, he didn't include like Carl Malone and some other people, there's certain names they always bring up because the media always pushes, like, for example, the media will say Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, and so on. It's certain names they always bring up over and over, but they never say Adrian Dantley, Alex English, Artis Gilmore, and so on. It's, it's certain names like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and those, also, those are Hall of Famers that yeah. don't get in the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's not right, a media exactly. narrative. So that, that, that's, that, that's reality. No, so, right. So that's how I. Well, in your reality, that's how I knew you were a Michael Jordan fan. But 
when you when you basically say things like you know he had the fade away and he was consistent that's actually not true in his first half of his career he basically went inside he wasn't a good outside shooter or fade away then as he got older he realized you know more injuries to go inside he's getting older he's not as athletic then he started shooting more outside more and then when the nba shortened the three-point line he started making more threes. He was not consistently a fadeaway shooter, but even if he was, let's say I'm wrong, and he was always a great fadeaway shooter, that doesn't prove anything. Lots of players are consistent, lots of things. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're missing the point. The point is not – the point wasn't the consistency of that he could do it. The point was the consistency of you've got your scorebook and you're marking two every time he clears out, catches it there and gives your team that offense they need. Uh, it's, it's the thing that kills drought. It's the thing that ends scoring runs from the other team. And that's why it was so difficult to beat them. And, look, I, I just gave you the light work early. I, I'll give you the heavier work as we move along, but I'll just give it to you like this. You guys are fans of uh, Succession on HBO. Did you ever watch Succession? You watched that show? Uh, no. Ah, no. Oh, man, that's a, that's a shame. You should, re- you should really check it out. Uh in that show, but I could, I could address there's your a fadeaway part if you want. Well, 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 just hold on, relax, get some water. We'll, we'll both be here. No, I'm relaxed. You, so, you can relax too. I'm relaxed. You can relax too. In, indeed. So, in succession, you know, there's, there's this whole power struggle uh, about the CEO role, and the kids are trying to take the role from their father, right? And as the kids are trying to convince people to go on their side to try to, you know usurp their father's power, one of the, the men that he's trying to uh, to flip to his side tells the kid, Kendall, he tells him, I've seen you get bleeped. I've never seen your father get bleeped. And, and that's the hardest part about the LeBron argument that most LeBron fans don't get. It's not that the fact that he's lost in the finals. It's the fact that people saw visually – the zone from the Dallas Mavericks where J.J. Barea for certain moments was guarding him and LeBron looked like a deer in headlights. Then there's the Spurs series where the Spurs, uh, where we saw Danny Green light Dwayne Wade on fire and LeBron and company could not get a stop. They got their eyes shot out. It's those moments that you can't, like analytics won't save you, uh, narrative won't so save you. It's of, what people actually points, saw. But... No, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're fine. Just before I before I continue, I just want to point out a quick thing. Um, earlier when I was talking and you interrupted me, I didn't say to you relax. And when I interrupted you, you started saying relax. And you know, you you assume I'm a LeBron LeBron James fan, which I'm not. Um, this is what I mean with Michael Jordan fans. They get a little bit assumptions and negative with you when you don't agree with them. But now let me yeah, address but your other you're points. making the assumption that I'm a Michael Jordan. Well, fan, can you relax not. now? You're you're up you're up. You're up in... No, no, you are. No, you see that's you a, that's a good. It's a good debate tactic. You, what, what, it it works. You told me well, to relax. So I had to relax. Can, if you can, what, what, uh, well, let, well, let's say, <laughs> let's say you're right, and I'm wrong to call you a Michael Jordan fan. If you can assume I'm a LeBron James fan, and you did it first, then don't question me for assuming you're a Michael Jordan fan when I did it second. Now, I'll show you how you're a Michael Jordan fan, because everything that you just said about analytics and about J.J. Barrera and about, you know, wins and losses and all that, there's no one in the NBA world who says these things except people who pick Michael Jordan. I can explain to you how you're wrong, but I'm going to keep it simple for you and ask you a simple question. If you're right and I'm wrong, the majority of the NBA world, not just Michael Jordan fans, the Jerry West fans, the Elgin Baylor fans, the whatever, Dr. J fans, all these people would agree with you, but they don't. It's only people who pick Michael Jordan as the greatest. How do you explain that logically? Uh First of all, it's not true. We can go look at Bob Ryan, what he said about the, the different GOAT debates. Michael we can Jordan go fan. look at Zach Lowe. Michael Jordan Bob fan. Bob Ryan? Yeah, Bob yes. Ryan is definitely ask him not, where, a, ask not him a where he, Ask him where he ranks. Ask him where he ranks Michael Jordan. I interviewed him from the Boston Globe. Ask him if he goes mm-hmm. by rings. Ask him if he goes by finals MVPs. He has the same takes except for one. There's one thing that makes him different. He picks Larry Bird over Michael Jordan. That's it. Yeah, but but the point was he's not a Michael Jordan fan. That's why I used him. I, I understand you, you you got a loose argument here, and you're trying to you know shuffle it together as we go. But the point is this: No, you're doing that. I'm not. Is, 
Okay. I mean, I've had this talk well, before. Well, let, let, talk, let me ask you. Let me ask you. a lot of let me ask stories you. about. No, I'll, I'll be well, open-minded. Can I finish my I'll, I'll be open-minded. Can I can I finish my right, side well, first before well, we not, do that? Now who's getting loose? Now who's getting annoyed? Well, I'm not trying to direct your argument. I'm just trying to finish mine, and then we can have a conversation. Well, brother, you don't have to direct why, mine. Why is it okay? Why is it why is it okay for you to question me, but I can't question you? No, I think it's fine for you to question me. I'm, I'm just trying okay. to make sure well, then, I get my thought out well, instead then, of being interrupted well, then, well, then me, and then, well, then me, diverted then, to then, what then, you wanted me, me to talk then, about. No, that, then let, if it's okay to question you, let me question you. I'm not trying to have a cool. loose end here, and I'm not losing the argument. I'm asking you a question. The majority of people who go by analytics, who go by J.J. Barrera, who go by LeBron James losing, and so on, usually pick Michael Jordan as the greatest. In other words, what I'm saying to you, caller, if a Donald Trump fan says the election is rigged and Donald Trump is the greatest president and everyone who disagrees is a liberal and things like that, you would say, oh, that's a Donald Trump fan. Yeah, I, I don't think that holds water, especially when it comes to basketball. So, again, when we're talking about basketball, well, explain why. especially explain these why. two players. Explain why. Well, because one is an argument that's about – fanatics about people who decided something before they actually hear the argument or look at both sides of it objectively. I'm telling you, right. my goat is Will. So I have no dog in this fight as far as Bron oh, no, and James. But, but, if I was earlier, Bron earlier, and George, if call, I had to pick one, it would, it would be Will Chamberlain. But where do you, where, okay, let, just, let, just, let, I want to prove myself. Just, just so I you know, I, I, I've, done a, I've done a bit of basketball commentary over the years, that's, talked to a lot of coaches, that's players, right. uh, played that's, myself. That's right. That's right. So I, I know okay. a little okay. something about the topic. That's right. So, well, well, so if well, I can, if since, I can since finish, though, brother, if I can finish, brother. No, since you put the utensils on the table, let me give you my utensils. I used to work for the NBA. You could back, I could back this up and prove it to you. I've written articles. My page has been plugged by many websites like Fox News, MSNBC, CNN, and so on. So that's great that you know coaches. Good job. No, and players too, because I played. I, I didn't just write. I played too. So okay. let, let well, me Michael finish. Jordan, what I'm Michael Jordan if that's played. Okay, he doesn't agree with you. If that's okay. Michael Jordan that's played. Okay, he doesn't, he doesn't agree with you. Michael Jordan played. Cool. He doesn't agree with you. Okay. That's so you have no answer. Yeah. So you have no answer. No, no I, I I disagree with what you said, and I wanted to finish what I was saying. And you, like a Trump supporter, but, but, started but, but, bloviating but, 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 and narrating. Why can't you Why can't you address my point? Address my point, please. I did. I did. Okay. You said you said that's great that Michael <laughs> Jordan disagrees. Why is it great? Tell me why it's great. Because his opinion in a situation like that doesn't really matter, and for the most part, PR-wise, most guys aren't going to say, yeah, it's me. They're going to play the humble role, as we've always seen people say and now, other and people now, are either. And now, and now who's being a Donald Trump fanatic? That's what a Donald Trump fanatic would say. No, not really. I, I have no idea what your obsession yeah. is with Trump or uh, well, why that's I'll tell, I'll in, tell you what, in other words, in other words, you, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you why. In other words, I, I was, I I was tell finishing you, what I was saying. You interrupted three times. Well, you, you, interrupted me many, you interrupted me many. You interrupted. You interrupted me many times. You, you interrupted me oh, many no, times, Your Majesty. But go ahead if you want. If you want. If you want to be victim, well, go ahead and be victim. Recorded. Go ahead. Okay. The call is. Yeah, recorded, that's great. So you so, can go I mean, back. You people, can go back and play the people call. People will be able to hear. They'll be able to tell what. That's right. Yeah, they can see. They can see how you were very nice and respectful. You were you were very nice and respectful. You never interrupted me. You were never rude. You were always positive. That's great. Go ahead and play victim. Your Majesty, continue. Okay, I'll finish. My Are point. you done? You're, so, you're the one who started the drama. I was nice and respectful until you did the drama. drama. Not me. Yeah, there's no drama here, man. It, it was just you. And, and by the way, by the way, I, but I, anyway, I, I love how you, I, I love how you tell me that I'm losing and I'm having a loose end, and you literally don't address my points, and you're losing and you have loose ends. Because you're asking me in the midst of me speaking, and then you get mad because your question isn't answered. Like, that's just relax not what for I was a second, asking. my man. That's not what just I was. That's not what I was asking. Me, what I was asking. Me and you have, got, let me, me and you have gotten let me, along let me, a little let better. Let more. me defend myself. No, can you relax? Let me well, defend dude, myself. You, you've what, been the talking. reason I brought up I Michael Jordan. The reason I, the reason I brought up Doctor J, Michael time. Jordan. Oh, you don't want to listen to anything. This is how Michael Jordan fans are, folks. This is how they all are. They just can't be wrong in anything. No, it's this is Drive Time Sports people. Radio, where you, where you do the things where you try to get controversy. Thanks for telling me the name. I'm just trying to have a conversation. 
that's no, no, you weren't. You were coming at you were coming at me in a passive aggressive way, and I didn't put up with it. That's all it was. So the reason I brought up no, Michael Jordan I, I'm, is because I'm not passive told, aggressive. I'm direct. Well, can you let I'm me finish now? Well, can I you said. let me finish now? No, because no, I didn't the get a chance reason, to talk. The, the reason you I the, the reason I brought me. up Michael. No. All right, all right. The reason I brought up Michael Jordan <laughs> was because crazy. you told me you you played basketball, you knew coaches, yes. you have experience, yes. and all that. So I was trying yes. to show you there's other people higher than you by your logic, and they don't agree with you. Genius. Which is fine. Which is fine. But that's Genius. not an answer. That's not an so, answer. So that's can, not I, an can, answer. I, can I finish? <laughs> that's, can I finish? No, that's not, an, that's not an answer. Me. Saying it's fine. That's not. That's not an answer. Because it doesn't deserve an answer. It's a silly question. Okay, I want to so, finish what I was so saying. Why, why is it? Why is it okay me. for you to put the? Why is it okay for you to put the drop on your history, but I can't put the drop on other people's history? Sir, can I finish what I was saying without being right, interrupted? You don't have I an asked answer. another question. Yeah, thanks. You don't okay. have an answer. So finish. You don't have an answer. Yeah, okay, you're playing you victim, way, and you're you're, go, you're you're playing victim. Go ahead, Your Majesty. Yeah, go okay. ahead, Your Majesty. Okay. Okay. And let's see if you stop talking for more than thirty seconds. So yeah, because you because you can stop because you haven't talked the whole time, right? Again, this is recorded. Everybody can hear it. So yeah, that's great. That's it. So if it's recorded, what are you worried about? You're going to win the argument. You've been winning. You played basketball. You probably right. invented basketball. And you wrote about it. Yeah. So anyway, that's right. That's right. I wrote about it. Finally, I worked in if, the if NBA. I'm allowed. I worked. I if worked in the NBA. Did you work in good the for NBA? You, man. I did. Good for you. That's Hopefully good. you got a pension. And good for you. That, and good so for you. You know, coaching. Good point. for you. Good for you. Yeah. You know, coaching. Good for you. That's right. Gold star for this guy. So finishing That's the right. point. Michael Jordan. Silver star for you. So you're still going? What does it sound? Well, I'm just reacting to your stupid points. Why is it okay for you to dog me, but I All can't dog you? All of your points are stupid, and your questions are stupid. No. So, I mean, what no, at different? least I answer your points. Your answers are, are you finished talking? Is there anything else? You're losing? These are your answers. You don't have any answers. I'm answering your point. No, I'm not being to allowed point. to speak. You're, you're, you're talking answers, over but, me. Okay, but when you, this is but weird. When you are allowed, you don't get, but when you are allowed, this you don't give weird. me answers. When you are allowed. You don't yeah. give me answers. This you is just weird, ignore man. You're, you're, you're just attacking me, and then you play victim and act like you did nothing wrong. No, I'm just having, trying to have a conversation, and you seem really Well, that's what I'm doing, too, too, my friend. Well, you know what? Since we're friends, that's what I'm doing, too. All right, my friend. Go ahead, okay. since we're having a well, nice cool. time, and we're having a good conversation, okay. everybody. And don't forget, that's everyone, the time. call is recorded. In case anyone doesn't know, the exactly. call is recorded. And he, and he played that. So, so people can go back and see who actually did what. But finishing my point about uh, Jordan uh, uh, and LeBron. Yeah, please, 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 uh, just, please just, give yourself just, more credit. You, as, you played basketball. Just as you played players. basketball, you know? Uh, yeah. And remember, everyone, just he as, played basketball. Correct. And he, he cut That's what a lot of Michael Jordan fans do, by the way. Whenever you disagree with them, do, they always do you go, know who did Ralph, you play basketball? You know Have is? you ever watched Michael Jordan play? Did you go to any of his do games? You know Are you Trezman a millennial? Is, they, they'll, they'll always say things like yeah, this. You know who Ralph Tresman is? Say it again. There, you know who Ralph Tresvan is? I can't understand what you're saying. It's too low the microphone. Do you know who Ralph Tresvan is? Samson? No. That would be a basketball player. Well, just tell, me, just tell me what's your point. Just get to your point. You're, you're boring the audience. Get your oh, he's, he, he was a very popular singer. He had a song called Sensitivity. You should listen to it. So oh, the singer. Michael oh, the Jordan singer. Yeah. And LeBron yeah. James. Yeah, there we go. Uh huh. Finally click. Yeah. Just let it roll around in that big head of yours and finally right. click. That's so much. And, and now, now, if I just, now, if I defend myself, you're going to say I'm interrupting you. So can I defend myself or no? How about you let me finish and then you hit me back? How about that? That'll be How easy. about you drink some Gatorade? How about you go drink some Gatorade? I will. I will. Get some okay. Water. I know only so, a dummy Michael would drink Jordan, Gatorade, by the way. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. So the Michael Jordan, right. LeBron James situation, just as a player, just just honestly as a player, LeBron, much better playmaker, Michael Jordan, much better scorer. Now, their player profiles are, are where we come in. Well, we disagree. The player profiles are where we come into an issue. You can run a 1-4 system with Michael Jordan because of what? His explosiveness and his ability to get to his spot. LeBron James, as we know, people who watch, struggled running 1-4s because that wasn't his best asset. His best asset was getting people involved in action, P&Rs, uh, running things heavy to one side, like that's especially to the right. That's LeBron's main action. And to me, he's the most gifted 
NBA player we've ever seen strategy-wise as far as assessing a defense, figuring out what to do, and continuing to do those things. Like, I'm a big proponent of LeBron James. Like, this is no shade against him. It's just I can when tell. you start talking about which, do you have a preference for one player or the other, when it comes to these two particular players, yeah, I, I take the consistency of my – I know what I can write in that scorer's book. I know what's going to happen. With LeBron James, yeah, you know. that hasn't always been the case. And that, and now you're brainwashed about Michael Jordan. You're brainwashed no, about him. No, not at all, man. We just disagree. Yeah, man. you are. Someday you'll grow I, I can, up. And I can realize. tell you grew up in the 1980s and 1990s. I know you're influenced by the media. He's your favorite player. You're really not into at all. him. I it's just so told obvious, you it man. was Will Chamberlain. You, you don't get I it. Didn't, I didn't. I didn't. My, I didn't, I didn't my guy you, is you're, the giant. You're misunderstanding me. You're misunderstanding me. I didn't say you. Re- I didn't say you rank him as the greatest. I know you said Wilt Chamberlain. Unlike you, I'm paying attention. Just because you pick Wilt Chamberlain doesn't mean everything else goes out the window. If you say something that makes no sense, I can't ignore that because you pick Wilt Chamberlain. Well, it's not something that doesn't make sense. It's just a preference thing. Like, how how far apart do you think these two players are as far as the well, I, uh, just a, uh, we, we have a misunderstanding. We have a misunderstanding. I never said there's a problem with you having a preference. I would never question you for having an opinion, a belief, an assumption, or whatever. I'm questioning yeah. your narrative, will, your will, angle, will you, your you angle overall. Your, will you oh, so the now question's got to be answered. Uh, you're yeah, a, you're yeah, a terrible yeah. debater, you know that? Let me, no, you, let me ask you a question. Let me ask. Let me ask. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. Since you want to ask your question, I'll answer your stupid question. Let me ask you a question first. How come? And how come when stuck. I'm rambling? How come when I'm rambling and I'm going on and on, well, and I ask you a million questions, it's okay for you not to answer anything? But now, when Your Majesty asks me a question, I have to stop everything and answer your stupid question. How does that work? You know. I think those are good rules. I think we should. I think we should follow those rules. I think it'll make for oh, a better so that's show. That's great. So you make your own rules, like no, a typical no, Michael Jordan. Serious, 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 you, you guys cherry question, pick things. You go by whatever how, you want. You guys move the goalposts. You guys make things uh, up I all know. the time. Everybody else at does. The, at the end of the day, Michael honestly, Jordan honestly, fans, honestly, the bane of your existence. I'm being honest when I say this. Everything you've told me Dude, shows I, me you're I don't a very care typical if you're honest Michael Jordan. Or lying. I just you, don't you, you are influenced by the media. You're, bra- you're in love with Michael Jordan. You're brainwashed you about him. You have no idea what you're talking about, man. I'm going no by idea. what you show me. So, and you don't either. Well, Mr. Bob, well, Mr. Bob Ryan is not so a Michael Jordan you know? fan. Because I'm, I didn't like say I said, what Michael Jordan fan. You said, I'm going you by said what you show me. You I'm going by what you show me. And you're not going to listen to me. By the way, to and the, all you to, to the host, me is this is what happens on my podcast. When they act like this, this is what happens many times. When they act like you, Alan, I'm sure it's all podcast, good. But when they act like, like this, this yeah. they're never wrong. I'm sure your podcast is terrible. They move the goalposts Dude, and so on. This is what you've happens. been contradicting since you've been talking. Well, you what haven't you shown me about? nothing. All, all you told you me, well, the only thing nothing. that you thought you got on me is when you asked you me who the finger was. That's the only thing that you got on me. Of, I didn't know you the finger, everybody. You got one fallback argument of everything everybody disagrees with that makes them a Michael Jordan fanatic. Which is a well, silly actually, I go more than that. No, I actually wrong. say more than that. No, no I say more than that. If, I haven't heard If much. all I said was everybody's a Michael much. Jordan fan, I'd be the most boringest caller in the history of mankind. Well, guess what? You are. But, and so guess again, what? You called me to talk to me. And I host, didn't talk to talk to you. I called well, talk you're to talking to me right now. You must love my boring personality. You must love my boring personality. You're talking to me. You're, you're letting the host take a break and just chill out, and we're entertaining the host. No, because you wanted to jump in. So, so, so let's answer this. Let's no, answer I, I called him first. No, I called him no, first, no, actually. Let's answer the real question. As far and as remember when you guys. told the host you're enjoying the call, you said to the host you're enjoying the call between us. I got you yeah, again. You don't know, I, I guess sarcasm doesn't doesn't hit your ears either. Oh, so, you're, you're gonna, come on, man. You're going to act like you're alive. Dude, come on, man. You're, you're you not, clearly, you're not, you you're clearly not called in. You me. told Alan. Alan good. was listening. You, you <laughs> told Alan, I'm enjoying the banter between you guys. You're I'm enjoying the call. Me, it's man. entertaining. It. It. Now you want to play it off and go, I'm being sarcastic. What kind of, what kind of garbage Life. is this? This is what I mean. Life is Alan, hard, are you son. listening, Alan? This is what I mean. They can never be wrong Life with anything, hard, Alan. Young Anytime fella. you prove them wrong, they just cannot they. be wrong. Who it's is, who is it's they? like a Donald Trump fan. No matter, no matter no, what you tell them, Alan, they're Dude, never you wrong. Really got Any point the you give, they're never wrong. 
This man is talking about Donald Trump the whole show on a basketball court. I'm, try, I'm trying to show you a pattern. A Do you know weirdo. what pattern means? I'm Do you know what pa- Well, then you're enjoying my conversation. You're enjoying a weirdo call. I'm trying to show you you're a weirdo. So anyway. No, well, then you enjoy question. talking to simple, a weirdo. That makes you a bigger weirdo. Simple, simple question. How far apart let me, let me, let me you let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If no, I was no, talking to a guy that I thought was a weirdo, I would never keep talking to him because he's a weirdo. So if you think I'm a weirdo no, and you enjoy to talking to me, then you're a bigger no. weirdo. I'm laughing at you, brother. That happened. Now you have. You know, for everyone I'm listening sure in the audience, the first, uh, for everyone listening in the audience, let me I'm tell you sure what's really happening here. Time. He has a pride no, issue. He can't really admit he's wrong. Is, he's not that smart, and he's going to say anything really to act like to he's winning. He has uh, nothing uh, to say. Anyway, anyway, so anyway, 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 I think you're poisoning Alan's program. He's got lots of subscribers. He has over 3,000. No, I think that's what he's you're doing. He's pretty good as a host. I, I think see him on camera. Doing. He's got a great background. I think a caller like you just messes up the show, to be honest. Well, that's your opinion, which doesn't mean much. So That's right. That's my opinion. That, thank you for telling me. So, again, office. simple question. Simple question. Sure. How far apart Go do ahead. you see your these magic. two? Simple question. Say How again? far apart do you see these two? How far apart do you see these two? What kind of separation are we talking? Oh, 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 it's, it's miles and miles and centuries and eons and decades apart. Mm. Yeah, if, if you want, I'll even put it a step further. I think there's lots of players better than your childhood NBA hero. Again, not my hero. You're talking to a Knicks fan. Where, 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 do, you, where do you rank him again? <laughs> You're talking to a Knicks fan. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I can show you so evidence yeah, he's your hero. hero. Would you like me to show you evidence? Would you like me to show you evidence? Well, that wouldn't be evidence. That would be you narrating again. Well, then you should be happy. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set myself up to lose. Do you want me to show you the evidence or not? Well, well, you continue to do so. So you say you okay. say okay. he's far he, he's, he's no. leagues ahead. You say he's leagues ahead of Michael Jordan. The separation I is think, huge. I think I think LeBron James and many other players are overall Ooh, much better players than Michael Jordan. Yes. Okay, so we're not talking about edges here. We're talking about you think just in general, all time draft, you're getting those guys before this guy because you think there's what limitations where defensively shooting wise. I'll, I'll, I'll put it to you. I'll, I'll put it to you like this. I'll put it to you like this. They're so far apart, you could put tons of stacks of Hanes underwear between them, and you have to have lots of Hanes underwear. <laughs> Oh man, this is crazy. By the way, you want to so, have yeah, a debate with me one on one, man? I, I think, uh, yeah, we can. Well, well, now it's, done. Dude, I'm, not, I'm, I'm unbothered. I don't think you understand that, man. I'm not bothered by you. Yeah, but, uh, that's so, good for so you, man. Where, where, I'm where unbothered see, too, man. Where, that's why I made a hands under work joke. I'm unbothered. Yeah, so where, where do you see Kareem? Because I'm, I'm trying to get an idea on your no, no, I, so I, where I'll do you no, see Kareem? Yeah, no, no, no problem. No, I appreciate your questions. Kareem is, I told Alan this in the last call, uh, and I think Alan was open minded to this. Uh, Kareem is obviously a better player than Michael Jordan and LeBron James, actually, for that matter. Okay. I wouldn't push back See, on that. Too. You're happy that I said both, right? You're happy. Come on. No, it wasn't the fact that you said both. It's like, okay, when we talk about the NBA and the times that the bigs rule before all the rule changes, three-point line and all of that, it, it becomes uh-huh. a separate discussion almost to where you almost got to discuss bigs by themselves. So, no, I don't, I don't have okay. too much of a problem with that, man. I can okay, understand so let me that. Say let me just, sure. So let me say, since we're both being cool with each other now, I'm going to be fair to you, and I hope you'll be fair to me. Here's what I'm going to do. If I get any clue that you're – I'm just saying this nicely. Don't think I'm attacking you. I'm not attacking you. If I get any clue that you're not interested in long details, I'll stop giving you long details and I'll just keep it simple. So, for example, if you say six rings, finals MVPs, Arrow was the toughest and all that, I won't even bother addressing each thing. I'll just address one point and I'll keep it simple. So you just tell me, do you want details or do you want me to keep it simple? No, we can just have a conversation, brother. How do you want to do it? Oh, it's cool. Okay, so for I'm example, right now anybody. you said a bunch of things. Okay, so for right now, you said a bunch of things. So, for example, one of the things you talked about was eras. That's one of the things you said. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of problems with the era argument. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to be open and, like, cool with you. How many points are you cool for me to give? Like, like I don't want you to feel like you have to be patient for 28,000 points. So how many points are you interested in? What do you mean? As far as a milestone? Like, like for example, let's say, let's say you were wrong about the eras, and I had, like, 49 things to bring up. 
I'm not expecting you to sit there to listen to 49. I'm not expecting Alan to sit there and listen to 49. So I just want to know how many points do you want? One point, two points, three points? How many points are you cool to listen to? Brother, you should shape your arguments the best way you can. If you've got to go all the way to 49, you need to retool that argument. It's a terrible argument. You've got to go that far, brother. Well, no, actually, no, no, no. If, if Things should be much more reasons, concise than that. No, 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 that's fine. I can be concise, but there's nothing wrong with giving lots of details if the details are legit. But I'll give you a point with the era argument, okay? I'll just give you, I'll give you four points, just four, not too yeah, many, not too little. The, er, the era argument. Every single thing they say about today's NBA – Except for one thing, and I'll tell you that later. They said in the 1980s and 1990s. Number two, in the 1980s and 1990s, all the old timers, all the old timers, you can verify this yourself. Don't believe me. Dr. J, Jerry West, Oscar Robertson, all that, they used to take a big crap on the 1980s and 1990s. Number three, even if I'm wrong, and the 1980s and 1990s really was better, that's not the fault of the players. If you played in the NBA and you're doing your job and you're balling out and you're doing what it takes and all that, you can't bl- any, no one can blame you for the league. And the last and final point, you're putting players today in a lose-lose situation. They can't win with you because if they do bad, like you say LeBron James didn't do well against J.J. Barrera, you can say, look, he did bad. If he does good, you can say, Oh, look, he did good because the league is not that good. They can't win with you. And these are the type of things that you Michael Jordan fans do respectfully. I'm saying this nicely. You guys put players in a lose-lose situation, and you guys tear down almost every era except the 1980s and 1990s, except with you, you pick Will Chamberlain. So that's, that's the difference between you. You're different. You actually pick Will Chamberlain, so I give you credit. But I'm pretty sure everything else you do is the same thing that other Michael Jordan fans do. All right, so let me respond to that, and we'll just have a yeah, civil sure. conversation. So, sure, thank you. I think, yeah, g- generationally, the same way that people talk about society uh, in the way of, oh, this was always better or that was always better. Yes, every generation is going to be the old man at the at the bars telling you how it used to be this and it used to be that. Like, I, I definitely agree with that point. Uh, the disagreement with me on this is. I don't I don't look at it from that spectrum. I look at it like this. There are Hall of Famers, and then there are all-time any-era players. There are certain players who are all-time any-era. You look at a Bob Cousy, and you watch the footage of him slapping the ball around, and you realize there are limitations there. You watch a Bill Russell on uh, the limited footage that we have, and you see him dunking uh, from, you know, the dot after taking one dribble on a break, and you realize, okay, that athleticism – would transfer to any era. There's a difference in Hall of Famers. That's something I was trying to get to uh, when we were talking about, you know, who's the best period, which I, you know, normally don't even put forth as an argument because, again, I'm a, I'm a guy who says there's a table and certain guys can't get close to that table, and that's that. But as far as, like, uh, looking at different eras, especially this one, and, you know, doing pros and cons, look, the same way you can say that that Dallas team that played that zone against Miami and befuddled them, that that's a bad moment for LeBron, you can also say if the East was historically weak, you should dominate it. So by going to the finals nine times in a row, he was dominant. So that's not a knock to me. Uh, When you look at that, that championship Celtics team, and you say, okay, well, they won all those chips, but the league was small. Well, they dominated, so you still got to respect them in the same way. So, no, no I, I, don't, I don't approach it from that standpoint. Man. So okay. I'm not a guy okay. who, I got okay. if, if you look at my all-time list, it's just full of guys from the 90s like that. Not at all. Okay, so, uh, so there's, there's many problems here. Again, I, I'm going to keep it simple. There's a lot of problems there, but I, I want to be fair to you, and I know this is the host program. I want to be fair to him, too. I'll just give you four simple points, four simple ones. When you question Bob Cousy and you question the athleticism and you question the other things that you brought up, you're proving my point about how you guys tear down everyone in the history of the NBA except the 1980s and 1990s. Number two, even the examples you gave me about how this guy can't do this, this guy can't do that, there's problems with this because even if I say to you, you're right, Bob Cousy can't cut it here. This guy can't cut it there. That doesn't mean anything because just because Kareem Abdul-Jabbar 
isn't giving the jimmy on people or shimmy on people and crossing people up like AI doesn't mean he can't ball. Just because Magic Johnson is not doing certain things like dunking from the free throw line doesn't mean he can't ball. I'm sure in your life you played basketball on the playground where everybody was young, and then in comes this old guy who dresses differently, who acts differently, who talks differently, and he just balled everybody up. You don't have to do certain things to ball in this game. Number three, if you're going to say, well, look, I disagree with you. I think these players back then weren't as athletic. They weren't as skilled. You have to show me factually what is your definition of athletic and skilled. What does that mean? Because you're making up your own definition. You can be athletic and be skilled and not do everything. And the last and final thing I'll say to you, if you're still going to disagree with me, and say they can't do this, they can't do that, they're not as good. Whatever you said, I'm not, I'm not quoting your exact words. Those points you're making, I'm telling you in the 1980s and 1990s, you could have said the same exact things about lots of players. And the best example I'll give you is this. There's players in the 1980s who played in the 1960s and played in the 1970s, and they didn't do anything worse. They were the same great players. The best example, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He came in 1969 at the Bob Cousy time, and he played all the way to 1989, and there's no drop on him in athletic or skill other than him getting older, him having injuries, getting less minutes, and things like that. Yeah, so, so I, I don't think you heard what I said. What I said was there are Hall of Famers, and then there are any era guys. So that criticism of Bob Cousy, that wasn't based on athleticism. That's based on us rolling the film and seeing what Bob Cousy actually looked like. From that same era, you watch Sam Jones and you say, okay, yeah, yeah, uh, he's going. You watch Havlicek and you say, yeah, he's going. It, it doesn't matter. He's going. But you go to that Cousy footage, again, of him slapping the ball down like a 10-year-old, and you tell me this man who could not go left has, has been documented. You're telling me that that guy is an any-era guy? No, we just disagree on that. Kareem, yes, he's an any-era guy. You're making you're making an argument that I didn't present. No, no, no. I, you're I, you're clearly skipping over most of my points. Clearly, I, I'm literally addressing all your points. For example, I heard you say there's Hall of Famers and then there's certain Hall of Famers and all that. You can say whatever you want. These are your beliefs. These are things you came up with. Your criteria. Your magical foundation. Just because you are, respectfully, we're both random people. Just because you a random guy says. I think this and I think that and I think this and whatever. It doesn't mean you're right or wrong. You're just going by whatever you believe. But you have to explain to me. So let me ask you a simple question. I'll just keep it simple with you. If you're right about the well, errors, well, well, well the you don't have to. I, I have an economics degree. What was your? What was your? Let me just say. Well, hold on. We, we were doing so good. We were no, doing no, so no, good. no, 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 no. We were. We were. But, we were, and, and, but you kept with the condescending. I'm gonna make this simple for you. Just, just don't do that. Have a conversation like an adult. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. No, I actually, I actually had a lot more points, but I was trying to keep it simple. Give you one question. Just one question. Yeah, yeah, yeah but just, right just don't be condescending, man. If, if, if you're right about if you're right about the era, if, if you're okay, if you're right about the eras, if you are right about the eras, you have to show me one Hall of Famer. I'm not asking for four or twenty or a hundred or whatever. Just show me one Hall of Famer, one who over the years he was really good in one era, and then all of a sudden because the era was more skilled, athletic, taller, whatever you think, now his numbers drop because he can't do it as good in this era. Show me one example, and you can't go by someone getting older or having injuries or having less minutes and all that. They have to be in their prime. Well, I'll give you an easy one, and we can do this for our recent player, and that would be Roy Hibbert, where the game changed in the midst of the prime of his career, and he went from a max, and he went from a max value player to a minimum salary player on the back of rotation. You didn't get my question. You didn't get my question. No, I answered your question quite easily. No, you, you, let me clarify the question. Remember earlier you said basically you're not talking about any players. You're talking about Hall of Famers in a room, and I didn't hear you, so I'm going by what you said. 
Hall of Fame players. Show me a yeah. Hall of Fame player in their prime. Because if you go by Roy Hibbert or Steve Kerr or John Pax or whatever, there's a million reasons why they're not doing good. They could be getting less minutes. They maybe never were that good in the first place. Maybe their coaches they have uh, their, their coaches don't like them or whatever. But Hall of Fame players are on a different level. Whoa, whoa, you know whoa, whoa, they can whoa, whoa, ball whoa, whoa, whoa. somewhere. He, he, he did not play because coaches didn't like him. He was a 20 and 10 player for a few I, years. I I and then the league got so fast that he couldn't stay on the court. That's I didn't say he did. Yeah, but that was that was yeah. a good example. You dismissed it out of hand. That was a good example. No, no, but go, go by your the, criteria. The, go by the, your the criteria. Reason not, no, the, the reason it's not a good example is because you can always yes, say is. this player the didn't league do good. Changed. Well, let me answer what you're saying. Let me answer what you're saying. The reason it's not a good example is because you're not in the locker room. You don't know what happened. Lots of players, like there was a player named Andrew Bynum. Andrew Bynum was a great player in Los Angeles. He did really well, but his, he wanted to make cars. His heart wasn't into it. He had some injuries and all that. You can't bring up Andrew Bynum. You have to show me an example of a Hall of Fame player. Which is why I didn't bring up Andrew Bynum. Yeah, which is why I didn't bring up Andrew Bynum. No, my point is this. I didn't, I didn't let's, think let's, about let's, Andrew let's Bynum. You brought up Roy Hibbert. Oh, my God. You're not getting yeah. it. No, I know you didn't bring up Andrew Bynum. You're point. trying to show me Roy Hibbert as an example. I get it. I'm asking you Hall of Fame yeah, players. But you're, you're, you're miss, no, you're missing the point. The reason I use Roy Hibbert is because the game around him changed, and he could not adapt because his feet were not fast enough. Okay, so it wasn't an issue of off the court trouble. It wasn't an issue of a coach okay. didn't like him. It was an you're issue of the game my, changed you're not, you're not getting mid-career. My you're not no, you're not, I'm, I'm going to answer not. your. I'm, I'm, I'm going to answer your question. I was explaining to you why you missed the Roy Hibbert point. The point was the game no, changed mid career on that dude. No, that was I, the I, point. No, I disagree. No, I disagree with you on Roy Hibbert. Also, not just because he wasn't yeah, a Hall of wrong. Famer. I said you. No, but I, I know I'm not wrong because there was articles written on this. There were other reasons why he didn't stay in the NBA. And, and someday we're going to have to talk about the, the not only the backgrounds of, of the majority of NBA writers and media who vote on most of these accolades, but we'll also have to talk about the demographics of that group, which will be a real okay, interesting here's, conversation here's, here's, here's when question. it comes to the here's outcome the and trying to use those here's, here's, as evidence. But finish, look, here's, finishing, here's finishing the, the point and, and answering ask your ask question. Ask relax. I got to ask relax. you a question. I'm going to answer your question. You know, you're, I'm going to answer your question. And if you're wrong in anything. Now you're going to dismiss all the writers? Are you kidding me? I'm not dismissing all the writers. I said there should be skepticism there. It really should. I, I, and the I, fact I, that I, you don't know that is telling. The so fact let me that show you, you the problem. Let me, show you, let me show you the problem with that argument. I'm not saying you're wrong because you're, you're having skepticism for the writers. I'm on your side. I disagree with most of the Michael Jordan loving media. What I'm saying to you is if you're not in the locker room and you know logically there could be a million reasons why someone doesn't stay in the NBA and you know they're not going to report everything, like you said, skepticism for the writers. They're not going to report everything, and we don't know no, all no, the no, facts. No, 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 no. Not that they can't report anything. I'm saying culturally they're not aware of things because they don't understand what they're watching or who they're talking to. I said that, too. I, that's, that's I said that, too. But no, but, but answer, answer, answer your question. Let's, 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 let's use somebody that I think will be fair. This, this will be fair for both of them. Let's use Clyde. Dismiss everything. You know? Let me just answer my question. No, question no, first. Really. If, 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 no, let me ask my question. That, that's what I'm going to do. Same, okay, so let me, let me finish it. Let me finish it. If you and I agree that there's other things out there we don't know, I'm going to keep it simple and say we don't know. You can't ignore that and act like you know what happened and then say that's, a, that's an example of about eras. Which is why this is why I picked the perfect example because we do know. Not only does the reporting say it, the other players say it. Uh, you can read about it from your boy Paul George. You can read about it from their their great coach, their great coach at the time. Uh, so I just told you yeah, so, yeah, we can. Are you going to cherry pick your articles now? How does this work? 
who's who's who who do you look at as credible when you say are you going to cherry pick your articles? Yes, we should well, cherry pick our articles. For, 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 there are some really good NBA writers, and there are some really terrible NBA for, for, writers. Yes, reason, we should cherry you pick. You didn't get my point. Though. The reason I said cherry pick articles is because when I told you there's articles written on this, you rightfully rightfully said to me, and you were right. Okay, I'm saying you're right. You said to me about skepticism, but then when you talk about articles, you all of a sudden trust these articles. So you're cherry picking your articles then. No, uh, what you do is, over the years, you come to find out who you think is a good writer, who you think is a bad writer, and then you get the consensus from other people so you respect, and you kind of build your own thing. That, that's always what you have. So Did you have a favorite writer at the Globe? Because you're a Boston guy, right? Did you have a favorite writer at the Globe? I heard you trust him. So you have to who you want to go by. Well, you have to. You have to. Otherwise, you're just sort of swarmed in information. If you have to cherry pick, but how come when I said to you that you're cherry picking, you acted like that's not true, and now you say you have to? Which no, one no, is no, 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 no. No, I was disagreeing in saying that cherry picking is some type of detriment. I was saying cherry picking is actually what you should do. That's good process. You actually should filter out the really bad writers and the people who are uninformed and, and find the best. You know, I, I, you, I you, want, it, you know it, what? It, you know what my favorite guy was. You know what my favorite guy was. Rest in, rest uh, in peace to him. Uh, the, if you're, if no, you're no, cherry just real quick, brother. If you're, all right, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, just real quick. Like uh, one of my favorite writers uh, was the boy over at ESPN two for some years, but you know he's written many books. Uh, the great Ralph Wild. I really respect his basketball opinion and his acumen for not only describing things, but understanding what's going on either in front and below the surface. That, that was one of my guys. Okay. Uh, rest in okay. peace to him. Okay. The, now, point, so the point in that is it took a long time to find him and other writers I respected, and because of that, you get a huge volume of work to read through. I'm old enough to where you had to get the newspaper to find out when the draft, you know, what happened at the draft. Uh, you see what I'm saying? So, me, yeah. Oh, you said real quick. It's not real quick. It's pretty long now. Uh, let me just get back to the cherry picking thing. Oh, go ahead. Um, if you're gonna, go ahead. If, if you're going to say to me cherry picking is okay, I didn't know you had that take, but now that you told me that, if you're going to say to me cherry picking is okay, you're going to open the floodgates with two problems. One, you can never be wrong in anything because all you have to do is cherry pick who you want to go by and say, I don't trust this guy, but I trust that guy. And two, the other problem you're going to have is let's say you're right and I'm wrong, and it's okay to cherry pick, and you think the people you trust are legit and all that. You have to ask yourself a logical question. How do you know that these trusted people know everything that they write about because there's no way they can because they're not always there. They don't have all the information. They're not always uh, experiencing the locker room stuff and all that. They're going by what other mm-hmm. people tell them. And maybe they have some personal experience. But how would you know then? You have to at best exactly. be directionally accurate, but you're not going to be 100% accurate. Directionally accurate right. gets you in the place of you're listening to respected guys who know what they're talking about, have some experience, and you're taking their opinions and you're weighing them as they come. But that's just your process. Again, your process is going to be flawed no matter what because, again, we're all human. We're all flawed, so our sources are going to be somewhat flawed as well. I'm glad you said all that. I'm with you. So now, like you told me earlier, your thought process, let me tell you my thought process. I do two simple things when I debate. I do two simple things. One, I, sh- I never debate people on opinions. Like if, if you said to me, bro, my favorite movie is Space Jam, I would never say you're right or wrong because you can't be right or wrong. It's an opinion. If you said to me, I believe something, I won't say you're right or wrong because it's a belief or a guess. I won't question you or anything like that. I won't question you. So what I do is when I debate people, I do two simple things. Are they factually right? And then the second thing I do is are they being consistent? And Alan will vouch for this when I debated him. I never said his opinions were wrong in anything. I just questioned if he was factually right and if he was being consistent. So when you say to me you have writers that you trust and you can't be 100% sure and you have to go by their opinions and all that, those are all belief, guesses, opinions, and so on. There's no proof there. 
Yeah, so at a certain point, it becomes the Socratic reasoning to where the best process is the process, and that's the best you can do, brother. There is no there is no 100% factual a, argument in sports better, opinions, brother. It's, it's yeah, right. I got a better, uh, I got a there there are I got people a better. right now who will tell you Steve Nash is the closest thing to perfection when it comes to point guard. There are other people who tell you Steve Nash was a one time the ball playing guy who had a huge usage rate that covered up for a lot of discrepancies. So, you know, okay. the, the so discussions are always going to be there. Let me ask you a quick yes or no if you can. If, you, uh, if you're saying to me this is the best option available, let me ask you a quick yes or no, and I'm, I'm going to set you up for something. If I found a better option, I'm not saying I did. I'm just asking you hypothetically, if I found a better option, would you then agree that your option is not the best option? Oh, dude, if you, if you found a better option from Mount Sinai, yeah, I'll take it from you. Okay. So here's, here's an option for you. If, there's an, if, if you can figure out when an era starts and when an era finishes and you have made your, you have made your conclusion about whatever, whatever I, you don't have to give me the exact word, athletic, skilled, less teams, what, or whatever, whatever you think was not as good or better, whatever you think, all you have to do to prove that you're right is a simple thing. It's so simple. Just show me a Hall of Famer who didn't do as good or who did better because now there's a new era. And the top I can of the tell head. you right now, there's no guy. No, I, I don't know because off the top of the head, that's something that you have to think about and really try to inspect and come up with the best answers for. So that's a tough one. I, but actually, you don't. But not don't. Not, not only am I sure. Well, well, not only am I sure it happened. Here's the here's the flaw in your reasoning here. If this was the Baseball Hall of Fame, I think you'd have a rock-solid argument on that. But since this is the Basketball Hall of Fame, where we let everybody in, oh, if you gave me enough time, the- brother, it, it'd be easy to knock holes in this one. No, no, I missed, I missed what you said earlier. You said if I get, you said if it was which Hall of Fame? Say it again. If this was the Baseball Hall of Fame, I think you'd have a rock-solid argument. But for basketball, where we're now letting everybody in because we're including everything about your basketball career in ways to get you in, I don't think your argument holds up if we pull up that whole Hall of Fame roster and go through it. I think it would be easy. Actually, no. But I'm not talking about when they let everybody in and all that stuff. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if, if you knew when an era starts and when an era finishes and you have determined – what the difference is in the era is, and why some players are, whatever you say, more athletic, more skilled, more dominant, whatever, whatever. You well, well, I, I don't show do more skilled stuff. Yeah, I don't. But, 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 that's, but, that's for the young kids. Point is, my point is, I'm not asking for 100 examples or 20 examples or four examples. I'm asking for only one example of a Hall of Famer whose numbers either went way up or went way down because there's a difference in era. And since you brought up baseball, you could do the same thing in baseball if you want, because I can assure you it never happened in baseball, ever. Yeah, baseball is a totally different sport. But the point was baseball has a threshold for entrance. That that barrier to entry is totally different from the NBA. So that changes things. That, that, that makes the conversation a little more difficult. That's why. But, but no, getting, getting, to your, getting to your point. No, no, so I, I when we look at – I, I didn't know what you meant by what? that. What, what do you mean by that? What do I mean by what? That baseball has a higher barrier of entry for a Hall of Fame status? Yes. yes. Baseball has a higher barrier of entry. More, much more difficult. No, I, know. I, I know what the sentence is, but how is it a higher barrier of entry? Uh, not only do you have to deal with the writers uh, who relationships matter in baseball as far as who gets in, then you've got the politics of – steroid era, dead ball era, these things, why this guy isn't in, why that guy is in. Like, baseball is a whole other discussion when it comes to the Hall of Fame, where the NBA I'm Hall of Fame, I'm look, I'm man, look how big the classes are every year. The NBA Hall of Fame is totally I'm different. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying this in a negative way. I'm just saying this in a conversation, respectful, factual, legit way. You're just making up your own theory of baseball and basketball. There's no proof to any of this. There's no proof that baseball is a more difficult Hall of Fame to get into than basketball. That's right. Yeah, you're wrong. But it's okay. Okay, well, show, me, show, me, show me the Carfax. Show me the Carfax. Because, brother, just look at the Hall of Fame right now. Look at look at who's coming in this year. And then go look at what happens in baseball. Where's that Hall of Fame? Is there a Barry Bonds of the NBA? 
Why is that the criteria? That's your own random criteria. No, 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 no. You told me these things are similar. I'm telling you they're not similar, and I just used the, I used the, of course, the outlier. I but I'm just telling you. you tell me. Is there a Barry Bonds in the NBA? I heard you, and I'm saying to you, why is that the criteria? The point was, if you don't understand that there is no Barry Bonds of basketball, because that Hall of Fame is much more difficult to get into. There's much more added variables to it. In basketball, those actually, variables, those actually, variables don't actually, exist. I could prove you wrong very easily. Let's, look at, the Hall of, let's look at the Hall of Fame class this year. Hold on. Let's look at the Hall of Fame class this year. And, and, see, because I want to use real-life examples. I don't want to use random stuff and hope. Let's, let's use real-life examples. That's a random example. Let's use the Hall of Fame class this year. Okay, we can do we can do this year, the year before, and the year before that, brother. And eventually, you're gonna understand that the basketball Hall of Fame, and the baseball Hall of Fame, are not the same. Brother. I'm sorry, man. I can't go by your beliefs. I have to go by what you can prove. To I'm, you. Not like Denzel you I'm, I'm not Denzel Washington. I'm not giving you beliefs, brother. Brother. So it's what you can prove. Mm-hmm. I hear you. So, so let me tell you about All right, fellas. So, gonna... so the basketball yeah. Hall of Fame this year. You want to look at the Allen is saying something. I think Allen is saying something. Yeah. Ahead, yeah, guys, we we have to kind of wrap this up, unfortunately. I would love for you guys it's to keep to go. going at it. All but right. yeah, it's time to go. Uh, but definitely, I appreciate hey, both can of y'all. Can we give a round of applause to Allen? Can we give a round of applause to Allen? What a great host this guy is. <laughs> he keeps working each other. I was watching him on the camera. He wasn't being rude. He was, like, being patient. What a great host this guy is, man. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. You guys are awesome guests, too. You're always more than welcome to come back again. We'll come pick up where we left off at. Hey, uh, hey Al, 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 Alan, Alan, uh, yeah, uh, as always, man, it's good talking with y'all. Not a big deal, man. People have arguments. I'm not sensitive. So I, I don't take this stuff personally, man. It's just an argument. So this year, though, Chauncey Billups, Vince Carter, Michael Cooper, Walter Davis, Charles Smith, Simone, <laughs> Simone Augustus. Like, this, that's the Hall of Fame class this year. Yes, in fact, that's going to be the topic I'm going to have next, year, next week. I'm, I'm going to have that saying, topic. Man. Is it? Is, in fact, that's going that's a great segue. Next week, I'm going to have that topic. Is it more difficult to get into Basketball Hall of Fame? Football or baseball, and I will make sure I give you guys my opinion on that, and I'll let you guys chime in. Too. Hey, 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 and and Alan, if, if this guy shows up, I'll show up too, and we can have a conversation. It's not a big deal, man. Good Alan, talking with you. Alan, I'm, gonna, good Alan, I'm gonna top that. Alan, I'm gonna top that um, to the caller. If you want, after Alan ends his program, which I'm a fan of, you and I can debate on my program. You want to set it up? Uh, what are you? Are you on Blog Talk or YouTube? What are you doing? Oh, I, I, I'm on YouTube, but if you want, you don't have to say yes. I'm just asking. I'm throwing it out there. Um, if you want, yeah, yeah, uh, can I call you and just do a program with you? You mind if I get your number? I'll call you up. Oh no, I, I'm not doing that. But uh, what's the calling number for your show? I don't have a call. Well, I have that, but a second option. If you don't want to give me your number, that's fine. Do you have Skype? Can I call you on Skype? Yeah, I guess it wouldn't be hard to download it. Hell, not big deal. Okay, it's especially since you told Alan. That if I call in, you'll be here ready to debate me. You don't have to wait for Alan's program or for me to call in. We could do it right now after Alan ends his program. Then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you got a show, you uh, just give me the number. I'll call in. If you don't, you know, we'll wait till next week. It's no big deal, bro. So here, uh, let me give you my Skype in case you get Skype. I'll wait for a few minutes. If I don't get a call from you on Skype, oh, no. I'm gonna assume you're not gonna. Um, my Skype is uh, Alan. Oh, is it okay if I give my Skype? Is that alright with Alan? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, thanks. Uh, I'll just say it out loud, slowly. I'll say it more than once. The Universe Galaxy NBA. The Universe Galaxy NBA. The Universe Galaxy NBA. One more time. The Universe Galaxy NBA. So if I don't get a call from the caller, I'm going to assume he didn't want to go on. I'm just Universe joking. I'm joking. Galaxy I'm NBA. That's, that's the YouTube channel? Universe that's, Galaxy. that's my main name. Right, but that's my Skype. If you want to call me on Skype also, that's my name page. It made my Skype page. Do you want to call me on Skype after the program? Dude, I wouldn't even know how to get him on Skype, man. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> okay, so we can't, we can't do a phone number. We can't do Skype. So the third option is I can go do a live stream right now. I'll set it up. 
and you can call in, but the quality is going to be like this. Like uh, when I was calling, talking to you the whole time, sometimes I had a hard time to, uh, hearing you, what you were saying. You were kind of questioning me on that, but the call connection is not the best here on Blog Talk Radio, so it's going to be like this kind of, maybe, you know? So you should yeah, know I, I, I thought number? you were outside. Yeah, I thought you were outside. I, I won't so. remember, but I'm not a bad guy. I'm not going to spam you. Yeah, nah, I'm, I'm not doing that, brother. <laughs> So next Friday, next next Friday, we'll both say yeah, that time, same background. Back yep. Okay. Oh, one more thing. Right, man. Uh, All right. Now. One more thing before you leave. Uh, to, to the caller, you can verify my YouTube page. If you still have a popular page, you still don't want to try to uh, give me your number then? Nah. All right. All right. Okay. I tried. All right, man. Y'all have a good weekend. All right. All right, you too. Thank you so much. Be, it would be a touch. Take care now. How about now? All right, Alan. All no right, problem. and yes, I will keep my word on that other thing we talked about. So next Friday, I'll be here, though. You got it. All right, thanks a lot, man. Uh, for everyone listening, this is a great page, Alan's page. Uh, subscribe to his page. Uh, share it with people. Call and all. This is a great program. I call a lot of shows, and a lot of guys are not fair, nice, respectful, and kind like this guy. So I, I really hope his show does well. Thank you. I appreciate that. It means a lot to me. Well, have a fantastic right, weekend. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks you for too. calling. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, so I appreciate that. Great, healthy debate. It was awesome. It was fantastic hearing. Next Friday, we, we're back on. We're going to have some fantastic debates to talk about. And I'll even talk about that baseball, football, as well as basketball. Which one is harder to get in? There's a lot to talk about that and unpack. But that's for next week. So let me go ahead and thank a lot of our great sponsors here. Let me go ahead and thank CTC ME Mortgage. Let me pull up their picture here. CTC ME Mortgage. And in fact, let me pull up their banner as well. I want to thank them for being a fantastic sponsor. Please, if you need a home, a mortgage, or refinance, either in Tampa in beyond anywhere in Florida or Texas. They service both Texas and Florida. CTT ME Mortgage can help. It can help you refinancing. It can also help you with getting a new home with very little down. And it can also help you with rental properties. Please call Kurt McCray. Call or text them at 346-527-7564. Again, it's 346-527-7564. That is CTC ME Mortgage. Definitely outstanding. And let me go ahead and let me go ahead and play a song here. Okay, then let me make sure I turn this off. I appreciate that. I guess that turns off the song, hopefully. But yes, I apologize. Let me go ahead and play the CTC ME Mortgage song. Let me do that right now, in fact. CTC ME Mortgage Company They stand by the
Appreciate CTC ME Mortgage. Definitely check them out. Let me, in fact, let you guys know to check out Kurt McRae, 346-527-7564. Let me just go ahead and now take these banners off here. And we're going to go ahead and thank our next sponsor. Thank you, Pushpin Adventures. Hey, you guys work real hard. You definitely need a chance, an opportunity to relax, enjoy a great vacation, definitely check out Pushpoint Adventures. They're they're willing and able to help you out. Check them out at pushpointadventures.com backslash virgin. No kids, no cooking. Thanksgiving dinner on a cruise. Please call Monique. There was a great testimony I put up right there on the Facebook channel, 626-838-1006. So definitely 626-838-1006. And then what the Paul, what I'll make sure to do is play that nice song. And this will help you guys out. Let me play the Push Fit Adventure song. sponsor and last but not least we got the man right there who's been on fox news 13 tampa bay that is chef g's florida barbecue sauce so delicious and addicting you may need a support group make sure you visit chef g's at 301 south 22nd street tampa florida and if you can't come down to tampa that's all right visit him at flbbqsauce.com and it's flbbqsauce.com. want to thank Sam Scola Songs. All of the songs that you're hearing is available right there at YouTube or Spotify. Check them out. And thank you again, Sam Scola Songs, song, songwriter Sam Scola Songs, and wife Mary. You can reach them at singalongwithsam at gmail.com, singalongwithsam at gmail.com. And let's play without further ado. 
the song right here. This is the Chef G's Florida Bark Sauce song. Let me go ahead. All right. Comes in for variety, Chef G's growing up barbecue sauce, a natural flavor. Chef G's growing up barbecue sauce, Florida gold honey mustard on burgers and ribs. Tasty fusion on pork and sausage, a classic Chicken steak chips, a hot heat wave on meatballs and ham. It's a cookout treat. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Serve on fish and vegetables. Chef G's Florida barbecue sauce. Chef G's. Florida barbecue sauce, Chef G's, Florida barbecue sauce. So to listen to addicting, you may need a support group. Really appreciate all the callers calling in, Lou, and definitely that was from, let me just take a look here, take this banner down. Take a look here. All right. So definitely thank you again for tuning in to another great episode of the Allen Alfred Sports Hook Show. And definitely appreciate all the callers. Appreciate the sponsors. Appreciate you guys for listening. Appreciate you all. Sorry about the technical difficulties a bit there, but it has been an awesome show. Thank you again for watching the Allen Alfred Sports Hook Show. And end the show with our sports. End this show with another Sam Scola song. So thank you guys. Be blessed. Be well. Take care of yourself. Have a great weekend. Be back here Friday, 8.30 p.m. CST. 9.30 p.m. EST. We'll be back. All right. This is the end of the show song by Sam Scola. Really appreciate you guys. Have a blessed night. Take care. Be blessed. Be well. And until we meet again. <laughs>